Welcome to Australian Survivor Archives, the only podcast going over the complete history of Australian Survivor from Whaler's Way right through to the current day. I'm very, very excited for today's episode. It's an interview. We love interviews and we've got a big, big one for you today. So much to get through. And until we get to our guest, I'm going to start off by saying my name is Ben and I'm going to throw over to my esteemed co-host, give his thoughts on today's interview because I know he's also equally excited for who we've got on the show today. Hey, Ben. Hey, listeners. Matt Dyson here, here as always. And I think you've been waiting for this one for a while, Ben. This Look, normally I often, you know, I, I'm the one tracking these people down and, and, and I take the credit. As you know, I like to take the credit for that, the bloodhound. And, but you know what? I've got to admit something here, Ben. I've had nothing to do with this because you've, you, you tracked down a phone number, you made the call, you then got back to me and said, you're not going to believe it. This guy is even better than we thought. So I'm not even going to attempt to introduce this guy, but I can say I'm really looking forward to this one. It's, it's, it's going to be a classic. Well, as I always like to say, man, it takes a celebrity to get the celebrities. <laughs> so I've just got to put it out there. That's how it works. But yes, excited is not a word that can even begin to describe how I'm feeling about speaking to this guy today about his time in Survivor. He's a Logie winner. First of all, maybe our first ever Logie winner we've ever had on this show, which is a which is a big deal. He's also a Cleo Bachelor of the Year runner up. All right, like this is this is how big of a deal this guy is. He's been on shows such as Home and Away, Days of Our Lives, General Hospital, Dancing with the Stars, with somebody else who we've already spoken to on this season. A former champion of skiing, which is something that I don't know if many people know about this man. A black belt too. This guy can kick our ass if we ask him the wrong questions today and everything along those lines. But also runner up on Australian Survivor season two, Celebrity Survivor from 2006. He only lost by one vote. One vote. And he could have been the champion of that season. We're going to find out everything about his career and time on Survivor today. It's a pleasure to welcome Mr. Justin Melby. Justin, welcome to Australian Survivor uh, uh, Archives. Hey, guys. How are you? Hi, Ben and Matt. How you doing? We are, we are doing great. Very excited. Very excited to chat to you. We've used that word a lot today. I just want to point out quickly, for, for Matt's benefit as well, because I've got a little fact here that's going to make him very, very excited. When you won the Logie back in year 2000 yes. for the most popular new talent, I just want to read out the people you beat that year. You beat out fellow Home and Away cast member Cameron Welsh. You beat yep. out a guy by the name of James O'Loughlin from Inside the Arena. Can't say I've heard of him, but I'm sure he does well. And you beat out a certain Rove McManus. Matt, look at that. You hate Rove. There's Justin Melby. You beat Rove for you. You like him even more. Uh, <laughs> quite popular too, Rove, back then. As you know. Come on, yeah. look at that. I, I, was expect, uh, I didn't expect to win. I mean, I thought Rove would have had it. But anyway. How did, ben, how did they give Rove an opportunity where, you know, in, in TV again, what, a couple of years ago where we lasted two episodes? <laughs> they should have forgot about Rove. They should have got Justin back on our screens. <laughs> hey, that could have been a thing. I mean, do you say that Justin's career has lasted longer than Rove's maybe? He's like, what, two seconds like last time we were on TV and we're still waiting for <laughs> Rove to return. But, uh, Justin, one thing I've got to ask, I mean, Matt sort of briefly told the story there about sort of tracking you down and everything. But yes. did you ever imagine that somebody is randomly going to want to talk to you about your time on Celebrity Survivor, which at the time of recording this was 15 years ago? I bet you thought this was well and truly I, in your past. Honestly, I thought this was done and dusted. It hasn't been on – well, it's been on my mind, Survivor, because I, I had been watching the latest season and – and the dynamics, it's quite interesting. I was watching King George and all his bullshit, right? <laughs> but but I, I've always, it's never been about me. I mean, I when I do a show, I then forget about that or what I did or how I did it. I'm just, I'm always moving forward and I don't get caught up in what I did and it doesn't really define who I am now. It just is some, it's just a job, something I did. And that's kind of where, where my life has been since I was 17 years old. So I forgot, I forgot about me and Survivor. I just never forgot about Survivor. So, yes. Yeah. Is it different though, Justin, like normally with your shows, you have a script and you follow the script and I'm sure you, you add in a bit of your flavor as well where you can, but the Survivor's different. Survivor is, you know, there's no script. Yes, you, you've got your challenges and, you know, your tribal councils, but at the end of the day, it's you playing you. You know, you, you're yourself. Does that make it a little bit different that in, 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 say, 
other than turning up to say a home and away set or a days of our lives where this is a game where you actually get to play as yourself? Yeah, look, I, 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 I had a little bit of experience coming into the show where previously after doing Dancing with the Stars, I saw the way they edit you in the green room and, and the, you share a time with your dance partners and the way, and, and, and your body language. And I knew the way they edit body language, the way you, you, you have to be prepared that they can do change a lot of things in the edit. So I, I kind of knew survival was, um, you don't want to give away too much to the producers yeah. because you don't want to give them something to choose from that they can turn on you and edit and make you, to be that guy that's not likable. Because I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and I'm a very giving, generous person. And all of a sudden, Survivor makes me an arrogant, unlikable person. I wasn't going to let that happen. Well, suppose at the end of the day, I mean, the TV shows that you're on, it's all about ratings and people tuning in. I, I guess you're right. It's no different for a reality show. If the viewers aren't there, there's going to be no reality show. So you're right. The producers, at the end of the day, want to get the most out of their contestants you know, the most out of you. Um, yeah, see, you're, you're 100% right. Yeah, they, want, to watch. They, they want to create drama and they want, they obviously it's, 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 it's bums on seats, as they say. Now, Justin, before we get into, I guess, the survivor part of this, which is the main reason we got you on, you know, there might be some people out there that, that aren't too familiar with what you did prior to Survivor. They may have only yeah. ever seen you watching Survivor. Obviously, you were on a celebrity season. Can, so can you give us a bit of a rundown? Like, I guess, what you did prior to going prior to on Survivor that. to get you labelled, I guess, as a Survivor, as uh, a celebrity Survivor. Okay, well, I guess in a nutshell, after leaving school when I was 16, 17, I, I made the Australian World Cup freestyle ski team in moguls. So I toured the world for a few years doing World Cup for Australia. I did moguls in the World Cup. I also do aerials and back then they had ballet aerials and moguls. And then um, I did martial arts since I was seven years old down at the local surf, surf club. And then I progressed through martial arts till I was 16 and then competed for New South Wales and Australia in the men's open black belt and Shotokan karate. And as I was doing martial arts, I was skiing. And then I went to America after I finished World Cup in Colorado, I was 20, 21 years old. And I come from an old school Greek Italian family where unfortunately my education suffered from getting on the Greyhound bus from, from Oxford Street down to Perisher for nine hours every weekend throughout from year seven to year 12, I was on a bus skiing. And most of the kids in Cooma and Jindabyne lived down at Perisher and Threadbow, but I traveled from Sydney. So I was always, I was always tired. So, I mean, so my schoolwork lacked, I was always sleeping during school because I was doing martial arts during the week and skiing on the weekend. And uh, when I got to America, after um, I had some big falls, I had double knee reconstructions, a cut head open, I landed on my head from 60 feet. I've, I've scarred myself a few times in the World Cup and, uh, and training. And I thought, geez, I've got to be careful about life after skiing because I didn't get the grades to go to un university. I wanted to, and, and I wasn't sure where my career was going to go, but I went door knocking down Sunset Boulevard for a print agent and I was 21 years old and I got turned down by quite a few of them and and, I, and the fourth one down the Sunset Strip, I, I showed them six or seven pictures of me and they they took me on. I was with Chad Wicks, a print agency here in Sydney and LA, they took me on. So I, I then started doing a lot of print work in LA. I, I put myself through acting school. I lived on a futon mattress for two or three years on my agent's floor and I lived in guest houses and I, and I was, had to survive. If I came back to Australia, my father, my parents said, listen, we're not going to support you. You're on your own. And you know, the minute we send you money, the minute you come home. So I wanted to prove to my, my family that I, this is a career. They didn't know that I was a ski bomb. I didn't really have anything else going for myself. So I thought, oh, I'll, um, what are we going to do? So I went door knocking. I got an agent. I started doing print commercial work. So I put, I put myself through acting school in Los Angeles and, and New York. Um, my career kind of took off in print overseas. And then, um, 
Naomi Watts and I were in the same acting class together wow. in Los Angeles, and we 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 studied with a few other uh, great Aussies. I think there was me, Julian McMahon, and Kimberly uh, Kimberly Davies. I think at yeah. the time. Wow, yeah. we you got me very excited with Julian we, McMahon there. Yeah, Julian Justin. McMahon was on wow. soap in New York called Another World. Kimberly, I was doing models in or some some show, um, and there was um, we're all. Aussies there together, we hung out together, and and then I didn't get a job for five or six years in, 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 in acting, so I kept staying through school. I used to want to come home and pack boxes in a warehouse at my dad's work at Botany in, in Sydney in, a, in, in an aluminium roof in the summer. I did that all through school, <laughs> school holidays, so I didn't come home. I was too afraid to come home and fail, so I just stayed in America. I ended up coaching some of the Australian World Cup freestyle team in Colorado and Utah. I did a lot for charities with Big Sister and and and, and a lot of these um, homegrown charities over there for um, I, for kids with special needs and the, and the Special Olympics. I coached all the American Special Olympic kids in skiing. And I stayed in America. And I was 21 years old. 23 years later, <laughs> I... I bought a couple of homes in America and Utah and, and, and got a show and I did Young and the Rest and a whole bunch of other shows and Days of Lives and, and stuff on 90210 and just, just, I just kept working. I did, you know, work for, for five lines, you know, with yeah. Michael Caine on the set of his movie. I just, I did anything. I had no ego. I did whatever it took. I, I put my hand up for, for a walk on and say one line. To me, it was acting tape. And if you're on screen, got acting tape, you had something to show the casting director. So back in those days, it was VHS, as as, yeah. as you know, there was no USB disks and internet and shit. You just, <laughs> you needed tape. So you had yeah. to put yourself, go to edit, put all your scenes on an acting tape and send it to the casting director with an eight by 10 headshot and a resume. And this was how you package yourself. And I just stuck it out and it was an exciting time. I mean, um, you know, my first year there, there, there was LA riots. I thought, oh, the place is burning down and, and I'm running out of town on a 1972 S10 Blazer, little four wheel drive, my skis in the back, going through East LA and the place is burning down, Rodney King beating. I thought, well, this is what I signed up for. Here we go. And the rest is history. And I just, um, and then I did very well on daytime television in America. Um, I know what I'm good for. I don't go and go for Sean Penn, Al Pacino roles. I go for roles that make money. That's my caliber. And, you know, um, I've managed, when you get rid of your ego and you just, you audition for what you're going to make money, for what people want to see you. Like it's not rocket science. I, I, I got all those roles and, and I made a good living out of it. And so that's kind of, you know, survivor. Survivor was big in America. I don't know how big it was in Australia, but but when it first started in America, I knew all about it, and um, and this was a reputable show, and and I'm all about challenges, and and I've got a very strong sense of mind for martial arts for for for, for twenty years. So I was like, you know, when I wasn't an actor. You know, like this whole, you have to do acting things. <laughs> to me, I want to pay a mortgage off. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't want to sit coffee and wait tables in Newtown and Sydney. I mean, I, I want to pay more mortgages off. I want, I want to invest. And doing shows or reality shows or shows that challenge me, that, that make me good bank, I'm all about it. I mean, I don't care what people think. Being, you have to act to say, there's daytime, you can't do prime time. You can't do a reality show if you've been on a drama show. It's bullshit. So, Justin, when did Home and Away come into it then? Well, Home and Away was quite exceptional. I was on Young and Restless back then for six months before Home and, and, and Away. Now, just to have a little bit of a sidetrack here for 30 seconds, I had given up. I didn't think I was – I had a great big manager here in Australia who was managing my skiing career. And, um, and a gentleman named Brian Moore, she runs Foxtel. He looked after Wayne Pierce, a football player, 
and, um, and Andrew Eddinghauser, who was a great Cronulla player. Fellow and, Survivor and, player now, of course. Yeah, that's too. right. Yeah. So Brian said to me, if, if you're going to learn how to ski and you're going to compete with the best, you've got to learn from the best. Go to Colorado. If you're going to be an actor, go to Los Angeles. If you're going to, like, I wasn't thinking of Australia. I want to swim with the sharks. So I thought that's where I had to go. If you're going to, if you're going to understand this or give us a shot, go play with the big boys and be a small fish because then you've got no ego. You've got nothing to lose. <laughs> you, you know, you've got nothing to like, I'm not good enough. It's just you and the big boys. So I just thought, um, go straight over to Los Angeles and, and, and get on a show and, and eventually, you know, once I finish um, the home and away, once, once I, I auditioned for Home and Away in Los Angeles, then I wasn't sure where to come back home because I just got a soap, Young the Wrestlers. So, but to be sidetracked, I lost my brother. Uh, he died when he was 28 years old from diabetes, from Daddy Bank syndrome. And he, a year before I did Home and Away, this was like, you know, this, since, since I lost my brother before I did, Home and away, there was a year where I hadn't been with my family, was still mourning the loss of my, my brother. And I spoke to mum and said, Mum, I just auditioned for Home and Away, but if I get it, I've got to come back to Australia. And it took me eight years. I just made it in Los Angeles. I just, I just got a show. I just got a network deal. And she said, Well, I said, it'd be good to come home and spend time with the family. Home and Away was a great, a great, um, uh, opportunity a great you know a great uh, board to 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 rise up upon there was a lot of you know Heath Ledger John McMahon there's a lot of great actors who have done home home and away to get um and then I thought oh I wasn't sure I was going to get it so then they flew I flew back to Australia I paid for my own airline ticket two grand I didn't have any money I didn't know I was going to get the show but I put myself on a flight for the callback and I went in and did the callback with uh Kate, Kate, Kate Ritchie at the time. Yeah. And um, they auditioned everyone in Australia. It was, it was a contract player. And I got it. I was like, shit. So I didn't know what to do. I had to pack up my stuff in America and um, move back. Move back. I, I bought a home in America. So I had a mortgage. So that was all right. So I moved back to Australia and, and started on Home and Away and, and I had an American accent, so they things were kind of like the writers and the director. They wrote my character as studied in America because I couldn't drop my because I couldn't drop my twang. <laughs> the home so way really is there. Just, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I just paid bloody four or five thousand dollars with Nicole Kidman's voice coach to learn an American <laughs> accent and learn phonetics. And then I had to come home and go, G'day, mate, I'm home and away. I was like, this is killing me. Well, you had to make out your born and bred summer bay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just, you know, I sound like I was born in, you know, Louisiana, the way my southern accent was going. So, Justin, how, how long were you on Home and Away for? I was on Home and Away for about nearly two years. But I got fired. <laughs> Shit. What did you do, Justin? Oh, we got to hear this. You got to hear this. yourself getting fucking fired from home and away. But a, don't, did, 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 did Elf Stewart, did, did Ray Ma, did he, did he not like you or something? Oh, we in the dungeon. Street, you got to get your bloody fired. <laughs> you're flaming galah. You're, you're flaming useless actor from LA. I don't know. I, can you I, can I was like... How do you get fired from home and away? Well, we we want to know. We want you to tell us. Well, I was even more. I didn't know whether to, I didn't know whether to cry or hide under a rock for a week. So I just it was funny because I put my hand up for every pub publicity. I was a publicity machine at Channel Seven. I'd done like seven, eight TV week covers. And yeah, the Cleo cover of Cleo, Bachelor, and all this other stuff that's gone on to make you this this heartthrob and um and then i thought then i won the logie and then six weeks after i won the logie the writers said oh they're cutting your contract short i go 
I just want to like him. I'm like the bubbles. I'm just, my couch is huge. Everything's, why are you firing me? <laughs> in, in my head, I didn't really go to Channel 7 and go, hey guys, like, why are you firing me? I just, <laughs> I just kind of went, oh shit, like, is this really, um, what do I do? So they said, well, you're still allowed to go to the Olympic Games on the boat at Channel 7, the 2000 Olympics. I said, great, I've got free ticket to go to all the Olympic Games because Channel 7 was hosting the Olympics. So your last days before the Olympic Games. So great, for the next three weeks, I watched the Olympic Games for free and went around <laughs> with Channel 7. And then I was, I was kind of like, I was planning three years in Australia because it was a three-year contract. And my contract stopped a year and a half early. So one of the... I befriended a few people on Channel 10 and, the, and they had me doing this theatre sports at the Emerald Theatre and the Comedy Store up at, up at uh, Bondo Junction, up, up at uh, uh, the Entertainment Corner, Fox Studios, the, the Comedy Store. And they said, we're doing theatre sports. Can you, do you want to give it a go, Justin? You're like this, this guy, heartthrob guy from Soap. I said, you know, you'll be really, you know, it'll be funny to see. They're all going to take the piss out of me. I'm like, cool, like, I'll, I'm that guy. All right, so let's let's go up there. Anyway, I learned how to do it all, and I learned all the comedic timing and all the fun, and I brought the house down. So they asked me to do the Emerald Theatre. So then all of a sudden, I'm doing comedy with with you know all these people. They put me on Good News Week to do the Great Debates. So now I'm doing all these debates and comedy. And then they offered me a role on Shakespeare at the Sydney Opera House. So I did the complete works of William Shakespeare where Darren Gil Shannon is on the Bell Shakespeare and Greg Fleet. And we did this tour around Australia doing Shakespeare, doing Hamlet. And I was like, how did this happen? I just wasn't afraid to give it a go to fall on my face. If you're going to take, if you're going to make fun of me, if I'm, I don't care. Just pay me the mullah. The and money. Put me in front of the stage and I'll, I'll take the piss out of myself. I'll be that guy and I just want to pay my mortgage and you keep the mortgage payment going and you can make, you, you can t- poke all the fun you want at me. So, so they really never care. gave you a reason as to why they fired you from home and away? Well, I think I flew, I was a teacher flying the seaplane. Right? I was this mystery character and they used to fly, I was a seaplane pilot. As you do. Yeah. So when we pick up the seaplane at Rose Bay, I think we're only supposed to do some B-roll for 10 minutes around the harbour and, and land. After we do our, our shooting on the plane, we, the director took you guys get some B-roll for 10 minutes and then land. Well, I would take the crew down the opera house and the harbour bridge for like two hours and come back later. And I think, <laughs> and I think that like, Cost them maybe five or ten grand more. You so were milking the shit out of was, Channel Seven. This is an Olympic year, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I went joyriding around the harbour on the seaplane. I think I, I think my character went over budget. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think I think they said, we can't afford this guy. This guy Harry. This no, no amount of Logies is going to save you from that, right? Like, no, you know, oh, Logies, no, no, home and away, we've always got one of them, they, you know. They, they realised at that point it was cheaper to bring Marilyn back for about a fourth, <laughs> fourth run. <laughs> Colleen probably, you know, her, her gambling habit wasn't that bad back in those days, so she was fine. Um, oh, you know, you still had those things. Oh, no, I was having a great time. My first character at home and away was Rebecca Cartwright. Had a, like, yep. had a... She was in. She was one of my students in the classroom, and and she had a crush on the teacher. Wow! And, How does um, Leighton feel about that? Well, <laughs> Leighton wasn't in the picture then because. I, oh, right. Are you fine like, then? <laughs> you know, so he was fine. But yeah, this, the the stories were quite uh, quite quite interesting because I don't find myself with a piece of chalk. You know, I can only draw stick figures on the chalkboard, so I had to edit all all that out. <laughs> As a school teacher, I'm the last school teacher that you'd look at. So, yeah. were you were you there when when Don Fisher was it Don Fisher? Don Fisher, he, he was my principal. <laughs> <laughs> he was a grumpy old piece of work, wasn't he? He lives in Tasmania. He lives in Bruny Island. Couldn't never, I I could never get that character to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like my jokes, and Flat I used to walk head. out on set in my UGG boots and everything. And <sighs> you don't need those. He, he would just be like really serious. And he, 
he, I just thought they'd never get rid of him. But he, he, he was, he was in his character was my, my, you know, the principal of the school. I had, I had a lot of scenes with, and and I always wanted. I'm all about running lines, especially when I was on Days of Lives. I don't care who you are. Let's just run the lines and get the dialogue going and get on top of our what we have to do. But Don Fisher would never run lines with me. Wow. <laughs> he was just, you know, I think he's just he, he didn't care. He just you didn't know? care. So, I was on it for so long. Which I have to ask really quickly. Sorry. Without sitting here for the next couple of hours talking about Home and Away, because I could easily do that. But you were on you were on around about the same time as um, Ryan Quanton, right? Right when he was a Vinny. Yeah, Ryan, we, he's Ryan and I were in all the same scenes here yeah, because his his character, my character, lived in the same house. Right. Yes. Yeah. I vaguely remember that. I vaguely it was, uh, wasn't like was that like surfy sort of shack? Was it above the diner? Yeah. Was that? Yeah, yeah that it was period? above the yeah. diner. It was above the diner. There was a lifeguard and yep. Ryan and me. I remember and, that now. Yeah. And, uh, he was a great actor. He, I was, great he was He was always, Vinny was always my favourite character. He would make me laugh. Like, he would do these things and just like do these, he made really brave choices. For me, I just want to get the lines out, get my shit done, get the scene done. But he would like do this stuff and, and, and it was just great. He's a very brave actor, you know? Yeah. He, just, yeah. he just made strong choices. Yeah. Got, to, got to ask really quickly because, I mean, again, like, look, yeah. we're going to talk about Survivor, but I, I would not be a, a good podcast host hosting another Olympic show. Listen to Off the Podium, uh, great, great show. Uh, just the period you were at in yes. freestyle skiing was obviously just on the cusp before freestyle skiing was included in the Winter Olympics as a proper right. sport, not a demonstration sport. If, if, How would have you gone had it been freestyle skiing back in the day? Were you on the cusp? Would have you made the Olympics had yeah, it yeah, been a different I, time I, period? I, I was in the top two top three mobile skiers in Australia. Wow. I had, to, I had to be, I had to compete for that spot to make the Olympic spot, to, to make a World Cup spot. Now, freestyle wasn't in the Olympic Games when I was doing, when I was doing the circuit because it was too dangerous and it was a, a show sport. It didn't come to the Olympics till 96, and I did World Cup 91, 92, 93. And, um, I mean, at 21, 22, 23 years old, you're, you're a veteran doing moguls at World Cup because you're doing bumps, you're doing jumps, you, you're doing triple, double helicopters, you're going upside down. I've got two knee reconstructions. I've cut my head open, my back, I've got slip discs. We, you don't survive doing freestyle skiing after you're 22 years old. So, so I, 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 I guess I was going for the Olympics, but I still had three years to survive through World Cup, and and it was it, it was just the pressure, the focus, um, being in that being in Lake Placid, and there's ten thousand people, and you're at the top of the course, and it's icy bumps, and if you hit your head, you, you knock yourself out. If you land on your head doing jumps, you're paraplegic. The pressure. I mean, I I enjoyed it, but I don't think I would have lasted to get a spot for the Olympics in '96. I've just got to quickly ask a question though while we're on the topic because yeah. again, long term listeners to off the podium, download now. Um, Dale Begg Smith. Yes. Is he may be the most underrated, greatest Australian that we should not we should be talking about more. Yeah, well, I ski with him down at Persia. And um, obviously he had a startup company, a community company, did really well. So he financed himself. I was sponsored by Coca-Cola and Brian Walsh got all my mat got all my my sponsors for me. He was self self-funded but because he came from canada i something i think australia poached him from canada because they weren't going to give him a spot they wouldn't let him they they, they the canadian olympic committee wouldn't let him basically run his business and ski basically and that's why Correct. he came to australia because we that's would exactly, and we wanted exactly someone right. to win us a gold medal which he did <laughs> yeah so then he came to australia and we just trained together down at parisha and um and he was just his own man. I mean, he, 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 was, he was still professional. But, you know, the big thing with Australian skiing, when they, when they, when, when they sponsored me to ski around the world, to, to give twenty dollars or $25,000 to an athlete back in 1990, you could put that money to women's soccer, to a whole team. You know what I mean? So 
Australia wasn't known for a winter sport. When, when we go through customs from Vancouver, when we're traveling from Seattle to Vancouver to go to Whistler, we go through customs and we're showing our Australian decoration and, and, and all our Australian, you know, ski team affiliation. And the, the guy in immigration will go, I don't suppose you guys are related to the Jamaican bobsled team, are you? Wow. <laughs> because they don't think we've got snow. They yeah. think we're the laughing stock. But yet we have some of the best Olympians in, in winter. But but we're known for for cricket and tennis and surf and, and our, our summer sports, our, our swimming. That's what we're known for. We're yeah. not known for skiing. Which, I mean, we're showing it a little bit differently nowadays, of course, oh, with uh, so. how that, yeah. that's kind of happening. Yeah, Got to ask then, Justin, through all of that, how does a call come for you to be on Survivor and, and how quickly were you to accept saying, yes, I want to do this? So I was in Los Angeles. I was, I'd finished a show, General Hospital. So you, I've, now I just had net, when I had network deals on a show. So um, I, I was a bit hesitant about, so because I'd already done one reality show, Dance with the Stars, but Survivor, I thought, well, this could be interesting. Um, I'd watched the American show. I knew what it was all about. I knew it had a really good brand. Um, it was just about whether it's going to be worth my while. How's that um, simple? And I mean, I wasn't going to come home and spend time with the family because the show wasn't in Sydney. Yeah. So I had to weigh out what other shows and what other commitments I had in my film, in my TV career. Um, I, I mostly just had a strong TV career in, in America. I went, I, I did do a lot of films, but I did long-term te television shows, uh, which was, it kept me stable, which is great. It paid off my bills. So I didn't really have any film commitments and the show was for this amount of time. And, and um, if it worked out, I mean, I, I handed that to my agent at the time to, to make it work. She just wanted to know whether I would do it. And I said, fuck it, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Why Perfect not? answer. I like, do everything why not? else. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Why not? Yeah. Go for it. Which did, we, did we, you, we go ahead, Matt. I was just going to say, but did you obviously survival was big in America? Like, had you been watching it at that of time? Course. Did you not? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was huge in America. Yeah. It was huge, and I I auditioned for a for a host for a new show that Cameron Detto went up for in America. It wasn't Survivor, but it was something. Was that, yeah, that was um, was that the one on like they were on like a it was a pirate one, a pirate yeah. master or something? Yeah, I auditioned for Cameron's role. Yes. Wow. So I had met with all the Survivor and the production company in Los Angeles. I I I I'd gone right up. There was between me and Cameron and another guy going for that role. Yeah. So wow. I was, and when I go for a role on a show, I really investigate the show and the production. And who's doing it? Casting, directing, producing. Um, I, I I really do my homework, so I know when I'm talking in the final meetings. I know I know what's going on. I, I mean, it's 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 common sense. So were you then when you were going to go to Vanuatu and you're on Survivor? I mean, were you researching things to do with Vanuatu? Were you kind of you know getting yourself yes. prepared to go well, out there I, and play the game? Well, I knew the American show had filmed in Vanuatu. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know if I was going to be on the same beach, which I was. And I was like, this is cool. Because I knew, I'd see, because we saw the American carvings. Oh, wow. From, from the American version on the same beach. That's a cool and little thing. I knew that I don't think we've American heard before. Version, the American show, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is Kind cool. of a little history there for, for Survivors. We oh, always like. It was on a Sunday night in LA. I think it was on NBC. I'm not sure which network now, but it was a big show. Yeah, CBS. Yeah, on oh, CBS sort of, on a Sunday night, yeah. it was yeah. huge. So they, they, yeah, they they moved it around a fair bit, but then sort of it's now sort of staple on a Wednesday night. Yeah. But I know sort of in those early days it had sort of it exactly. had moved around. And, which and, and sorry for me, I don't gauge what Australia thinks. I I engage what America thinks in television and the publicity and the value of of the show. 
Which was still, I mean, it was it was big in Australia, and sort of, it obviously we it, we done a local version in two thousand and two, and kind of the whole story behind how your season came about was that Channel Seven found this loophole that they could do a celebrity version because that sort of wasn't contracted. Sort of why Nine had the US version still. So it was sort yeah. of it kind of came out of nowhere, and then kind of you know that's how it, it happened. But we always like to ask a question to our guests, so Justin about. We all are aware that you were playing for charity, but of course you're all paid an appearance fee. And we're learning from people who want to disclose how much they were paid that certain people are getting paid more than others. Do you remember how much you were paid to do that? Oh, yeah. I didn't give a shit about all that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was on a network deal with, with ABC General Hospital. So I get negotiated under American network deal. So my starting cost was over 75000 just to start the show. Wow, and then okay. it went up to 80 or 90 and probably 20 or 20 something in there. So I, I probably walked away after the show for two, 250,000. Now, now yeah, Matt, well. that's got to be the highest so far. Yeah. I can't think of anybody a, that we know of. No. That's, wow. I had a feeling that might be the case, especially the fact that you'd been doing shows in America. And, in America. Stuff. It, and that's yeah, the only reason. It's no, it, it doesn't mean anything to all the other wonderful contestants and cast on the show. It just means I, my, in in the business, when you, my negotiation is from a network deal in America, yeah. and I already had one at NBC, I had one at CBS, and I had one at ABC. So under the Screen Actors Guild and the union and the network, when you got a network deal, that's the negotiation power of your agent. Now, if I didn't have a network deal with Channel 7 under a net, I, I didn't have a network deal. And Australia doesn't really operate that way in terms of negotiations and 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 television. I mean, I mean, Julie McMahon was on 250000 and for Nick, Nick Tuck. So if he was to do the next show, he would probably get 400000 because it's based on the network deal from the previous show. And that's how Hollywood works. Just going to be a shameless plug, Matt. Can I just really quickly, sorry. Yeah. Justin mentioned Nick Tuck, and I think it's legally my right to say, over on the Oz Network, a great show co-hosted by me, you can download every single episode of Nip Tuck, now available <laughs> recaps. Great show. Sorry, Matt, that's shameless okay. plug. <laughs> you, you love a shameless plug there. But, uh, no, it, it's interesting because, yeah, what, the, the game went for 25 days. Obviously, there would have been, you know, you, I'm sure you were there a few days before and, and after. But so, say, so basically for a month's work, I mean, as if you were ever going to say no to a payday like that. I mean, that's that's a good payoff for some I'm of your mortgages, over, you know. I'm going to get over a quarter million dollars to sit on an island yeah. for a month. I'm, I'm not <laughs> complaining. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, I paid half the mortgage off. I bought another Harley when I go back to America. And I invested in a property in Colorado. Awesome. Wow. Kind of all ticks the boxes. I get the money and I get rid of it. Otherwise, you pay tax for it. But let's true, not true. So, uh, but let's, <laughs> when I get the money, I get rid of it. So yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I, I, I reinvest it so I don't pay the, so you, so you don't get all the income tax. You're, you're but that's you're another show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, we're be finding all these spin-offs here, Justin, that we should be doing. We've got you the Olympics what? episode, the Home and Away episode. I want to talk more about Julian yeah. McMahon. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're, we're filling Justin, the next week. <laughs> Justin should be hosting Celebrity Apprentice. Oh, yeah. I love that. I'll go on that show. I'm not going to Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. Dicko won it. I mean, if Dicko can win it, you can you can bloody uh, go on there and, and win it. Yeah, speaking of like Dicko and, and people on the show, like obviously you were with Kim on, on Dancing with the Stars yes. on your website. I saw that you did a piece with Wayne Gardner. I think that was before you were on Survivor. So you yeah. obviously associated with some of the – I mean, were you familiar with other cast members, people like Guy Leach and, and kind of well. Elton well, Flatley? Guy, and- Guy, Guy, I, Guy, I was a very, I knew North Bondi Surf Club and I've been a lifeguard and a nipper and, and I'm a bronze instructor oh, and I did my 12 years lifeguarding. So in back in my day, there was the Iron Man series and the Cool and Gutter Gold TV, there was a Cool and Gutter Gold Iron Man series and the Nutri Game Iron Man. So I had seen Guy run on my beach as watching him kick but the guy is just a machine. So I, I was a fan of Guy Leach because he was a super athlete and I have a lot of respect because I, I know as an athlete what it takes, the discipline, the, the nutrition, the food, the commitment, the hurdles, the setbacks, the injuries, 
it's it's not showing up on the day. It's all that training that gets you to that elite level. So I I I was a distant fan of guys, and I and now we're best now we're dear friends and we play golf and all that kind of stuff. But I knew all about Guy Leach's career. Um, Gabriel Richens is a mate of mine because we do a lot of charity together and, and we hung out in LA together. Uh, Kim Johnson, Dance with the Stars. Um, and we got to spend a lot of quality time together with Kimmy. Um, Nicole Dixon, no, well, Nicole and I had the same agent. So that was like, I was told by my manager, you get on great with Nicole because we're the same, that we, we, we were the same, uh, Stacey Testro management and an and an agency. Um, Wayne Garner, well, I ride and race motorcycles at Eastern Creek. I've got a, a TLR Suzuki in my garage right now. I'm a fan. I've watched him in the Grand Prix. Um, I just have so much respect for that kind of, that just kind of discipline and, 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 and skill. Um, who else? Um, Football, rugby, I went to an old rugby school. I watch Elton, um, watch him in, hit the goal in the South Africa in World Cup, South Africa, amazing. Um, and I, I'm, I'm a rugby fan. Um, so I go for the Waratahs and all that. And, and Oh, don't tell that to the, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else? Well, I was going to say. Ambo did it, no? You didn't know Amber? You didn't know Amber? I was going to quickly ask you about David just because we're all going to talk a bit about David, but, like, you had just been beaten by Pauline Hanson on Dancing with the Stars. So I was. Straight away, well, like, fuck you, David. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I was still sick in therapy for Pauline Hanson wearing that Grace Olivia Newton-John <laughs> suit on the last... In the, in the dance-off we had, I was in the finals of Dancing with the Stars, and when I saw Pauline came out in this leopard print lycra, grease, <laughs> Olivia Newton, John suit, and shake her booty in front of live television and beat me, I was devastated. I did seek help. <laughs> I was. I did That's why you broke rock. David's pot. There it is. That's why you broke his pot. There was I revenge. did climb under a rock and didn't get out of bed for a week and watch Netflix. It was a very hard. <laughs> It was a hard stage of my life. So, and then, and then when I got to, when I got to, um, so that's how, and Pauline, actually, she was a sweetie to me on Dance with the Stars. We, we, we chatted on, on a few occasions. So, um, I don't really care what they do as, as long as they're respectful to me. And they, and I, with my relationships and, and I didn't know much about David, I knew that Pauline and David had, had a little, did, did they have a little thing together? Well, uh, I mean, okay, you, okay. Uh, I'll tell you. So I, I've just finished reading David Oldfield's book. It's actually an amazing book. I, I really enjoyed it. I only read it last week. And, and and towards the end of the book, he brings up that comment. And obviously everyone wants to know, did he do anything with Pauline? And, and basically he just says at the end of the day, it's not going to matter if he, if he admits it or not, no one's going to believe him. So he said, it's up to you to make up your own mind. That's and, yes. and that's what it is. So, so uh, he, in the end, he, he just, of course he did. <laughs> Give him a few beers, put his goggles on. Is anybody- we'll get it out of him on the reunion. What? That's our goal, Matt. Yeah. Now, um, Fiona mentioned that that she had met you when she attempted a um, sort of a career over in America. That uh, that she spent a day or so with you. That you showed her a ropes, explained to her about how to get a bank account set up there and stuff. Do you remember that? Like, do you remember meeting Fiona? I remember Fiona. Horn? Fiona. We had similar agents and similar work together. Um, we hung out a few times. We knew each other in the local circuit. So um, we, just, I, I, we were good friends. We had, I'm not sure what capacity, but we hung out and we had a lot of respect for each other. Mm. So, so she, her, her, her and I had, had good history. Which it sounds like, I think, based on that, that you would be the most connected then of all the players yeah, in terms I of agree. knowing right. everyone. Right. Yeah. yeah. In, no, in terms of who we're talking to. I kind of knew every, I, I kind of, I kind of knew everyone. Okay. Were you connected to Ben Wynn? Cause we're trying to track him down. <laughs> we're trying to track him down, Justin. You know, <laughs> that guy was a machine. <laughs> the guy showed up and I like, 
I'm a fan of Ben Roberts, you know. I always I do a lot for the Australia Day charity and I always run up and get a photo with Ben Roberts. So I was like, there's Ben Wynn. I thought it was just like another Ben Roberts. He's huge. Um, I think he's one of those secret agents that just shows up in <laughs> Vietnam or something. You know what I mean? He's like, I agree. He's like that SAS, you can't come home and tell your family. We, we don't even know if Ben, I, I believe, I don't even know if Ben wins his real name, honestly. I, I, he's, he's like a ghost. Yeah, I think literally he, not a trace of him. I think his yeah. baptismal name is Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Yeah. I want to see. I want to see one day. I, I want one day. I want to turn on my screens. I want to see you hosting Celebrity Apprentice, and I want to see Ben Win on Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> I would. I, I would love it. I'll make. I'll make all the challenges like SAS Australia. You know, they'd be absolutely throwing them off bridges and shit, right? Now, Justin, let's get into the game. So on day one. The game starts. Now, now you're, you're nowhere to be seen. So they only start with nine contestants. Obviously, yeah. you're, yourself. Yeah. Uh, you're not there. Gabrielle's not there. And Ben Wynn's not there. So nine Did you know? Did they, what did they say? Did you just say, hey, did they let you know before the game started, hey, you're going to be on an all-girls tribe. You're not going to start straight away? Or what happened there? So I was waiting to see who was on the show first. So with my agent, I was just waiting to know who would be doing a show before. Um, it was a bit like, um, you know, I, I have no qualms about doing a rea re re reality show. I, I just want to know that there was, um, those people from all walks of life that had their own talent or, and, and there was, because I knew quite a few people were going to be on it. I thought it'd be fun, and that's when they, when my agent said, "Well, you're going to be on the girls." I said, "Well, who's on?" They're they're doing a little, I don't know, what do you call it, a plot or something? They're going to put you with the girls' team. Yeah, yeah. And I knew Gab. A twist. So Gab, Gab and I were having a bit of a, a chuckle together. He's, you know, she's going to go with the blokes, and I'm going to go with the, with the girls. And um, and all you know, Kim, Fiona, uh, Imogen, I kind of knew. Um. We had some similar friends in Sydney. Um, I thought, why not? I mean, uh, yeah, I, 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 I didn't really think too much. Do you, do you think that suited you? Like, would you did that? Do you think that was better for your game, or do you think it would have been better to be either with the guys or, or a mix? So, my only strategy coming into the show was don't be a threat. So. Um, I didn't mind whose team I was on. I just wanted to get, I just wanted to be myself and get along with everyone and, and pull my way as a, as a, as being, as, as being in a tribe or being part of a, um, being part of a team. I, I just wanted to, I just want to be a team player. So, and then, and then for me, I, from day one, things change. So I've, I, I, I didn't want to get set into a pattern of this is the way I'm going to play it or this is my strategy because then a, there was a storm, there was rain and people wanted to leave. There were too many variables that would offset. It can, it can rattle you. So the idea is to have an open slate, blank, blank canvas, come in, Work out the dynamic of the show, who's in it. Work out, well, stay warm, eat. And there was already a, there was already a few tough guys, Guyton and Elton and, was, and strong men that were going to um, win the challenge. I mean, I've just been on the set of General Hospital for a year eating donuts and craft services, so <laughs> I haven't really been to the gym. So they can have that, right? And... <laughs> I, I, you know, I was a bit caught up at the moment seeing Kim and Gab. I, I only kind of walked in. I was already getting paid a shitload of money. So I'm like coming into this as a holiday, to be honest. Yeah. I was Which, like, this is great. Look at the island. Mm. Oh, what are we doing? Right. Survivor. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, Which, I mean, it kind of worked for you in that way because yeah. you're on a beach with a majority of people you know. 
Um, you're the only male on a, a tribe where some of these women are struggling and not knowing what to do. So they're probably looking to you for a bit of help, which we saw you became the fire god. And then but, ultimately but, you're playing into that. And it's sort of, you didn't, at least from what we could see, seem in any danger for that entire first half because you were so liked and so valuable to your tribe. Yeah, but I was very respectful. Like the, 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 the women, they're all very beautiful, smart, intelligent women doing the show who, who all brought their own um, expertise and their own talent, their own skill set, their own knowledge to how they wanted to play the show. Um, and they understood what was really smart about the girls is they understood their weaknesses and they understood their strengths. So it, it's so I kind of worked out well. Um, they just wanted food, and they could be as strong as the men, you know. But I think that's that. That was just the dynamic of the chain of the game changed when they weren't being fed, and the weather was so bad at night. So the dynamic of my strategy wasn't to be I was going to be the strongest guy with the girls. It was it was to work with the girls, not work against them. Just on those early days on on Moso, we, we talked a lot about Imogen and Nicole's relationship. I, I've, I've referred to them as maybe the most powerful couple in the history of Australian Survivor. I mean, yes. were you privy to kind of those early days of those two getting to Were you ever kind of thinking to yourself, at least on a strategic level, like these two are very close, this could be dangerous, I'm going to keep an eye on them? No. In, in, in what timeline are you referring to? Even for right from the beginning, like, I mean, did you no, kind of see no, no. any of that early on? We're very different. We're, we're um, Imogen, Imogen was finding her place. I think she had, she had some struggles with it, with the early challenge challenges. Um, I think the attention was on Imogen in the, in the beginning, but so Nick wasn't, I wasn't really paying too much attention to Nick's, Nick was just a beautiful mum. I mean, she 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 didn't know what how she fitted into this game either. She, I think she was just. I'll give it a shot. I think everyone had this attitude, like let's give it a shot. Uh, well, I mean, from, with their agents and family, hey, they can just survive. But yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. See what it's all about. I don't think the dynamics, the strategy, what was asked, what needed to be played, the politics, the the. I don't think all that took a role till a few episodes in. Which is, it's so interesting you say that because in a weird way, I think that adds almost an extra element to just that relationship between those two. Because I mean, in, I'm sure as you see watching Survivor now, it's it's day one, you're out of the gates. It's I'm going to an alliance, there's an idol there. There's like, it's it's gung, gung ho. All jokes aside about Matt's time on Survivor. I mean, a lot of why Matt was voted out so early is there was, you know, politics at play and yeah. st strategies and kind of all these kind of things going on. Whereas, to me, I'm old school. I like the old school dynamic of Survivor where it was just so much more just social based and everything along those lines. And Correct. it's fascinating to kind of have that, like how Imogen obviously turned a game around, but a simple friendship with Nicole that would blossom into what it did. And they're not in that going, oh, I'm going to be with you because we're going to be a great team. They're just It's natural because that's just how they formed a friendship. And that Correct. turns into such a, a powerful duo in that game. Yeah, I... I, I... I can speak for a majority of what I assume would be on this topic that the social aspect and the carefreeness coming into the show, I felt was similar to mine. I thought everyone just took a what the hell attitude. When Kim Johnson tells you, you know what, on day two or three that she's, she's ready to go home, she's, she wants to leave, was that surprising for you or, or did, did that not matter because you think, well, at least it's not going to be me? Um, I wasn't a huge surprise. It was just, I wasn't, I wasn't too surprised because <laughs> I was sleeping next to King. I was spooning King like this <laughs> under this banana leaves that leaked water. And I'm, as I'm like spooning next, next to Kim, cause she was like a sister to me. We did dance with stars. We're doing the rumba, the samba right up against each other. And we were, we were just best mates. So Kim, are you cool? Like, yeah, just, let's just keep warm, Justin, we're like this. And I opened my mouth, water was dripping because <laughs> I wanted to sleep. Water's dripping on my face like that. And then I turned my mouth to get <laughs> in my mouth, right? Our 
we did not build the best house on the beach. It was a piece of shit, right? <laughs> so it leaked, it blew apart, it fell down. It was, it is what it is. I just, I don't think it was Robinson Crusoe, right? This was just whatever crap we could get up there, but we weren't expecting a tropical thunderstorm to hit the beach at the same time. So I was sleeping in the rain. Kim was wet. We were soaking wet. Kim's just like, Justin, I don't want it. I don't need this. I'm like, you don't do this. No, this is not me. She was so unhappy. I'm like, Kim, I want, just just get off here. Go. Like, what, what, what do you want to sleep in the rain for? Right? So, so it, it was a no-brainer. But And I was, I was everything Kim, Kim told me everything. I, I, was, I was with her the whole time. So she just did, she hated it. Which, Wasn't when it... When ultimately the, the tribe swap comes about, uh, you're obviously still on, on Moso. You've got Amber and Fiona, who were obviously a little bit at each other's throats, but as we've learnt through these interviews, not as much as yeah. it you know, yeah. maybe seems that way. How, how shocking was that to you that night when Amber ended up switching and siding with David and, and, and Elton and you were kind of at that point looked like, shit, I'm on the outs right now. I, I had no idea. Or did you have an idea that Amber was no, going to well, side Fiona? Honestly, I was gathering wood. I was looking for um, sugar cane and spinach and taro, and I was just all about keeping keeping my. I never won a challenge, right? So um, I didn't start off as that strategy, but I realised if I start winning, I become a threat. So I was quite happy just to do my best, but if you put food in your stomach, and then you got to go and starve again, your stomach shrinks and the withdrawal plays with your head. So not having abundance of food and winning all the challenges worked for me than against me because I wasn't mentally, I wasn't going through a withdrawal syndrome of food. My stomach shrunk, it got used to what I ate in the morning, it got used to just the coconuts, it got used to you know, finding the spinach in the water, it just, it, just, it got used to that's the way they live on Vanuatu, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't, your body just gets used to eating when you need it. So I was kind of in my own world, just chopping the wood, fixing up the leaks in the house and, and not paying attention to what Amber and Fiona were doing. It's not until I saw the show, I was seeing what the camera, what was going on with them. And, um, and that's, that was new to me because I still didn't want to play into the drama, you know? Which it's fascinating how that kind of all played out then afterwards because yeah. I loved it when we had Amber and I can't remember if it was when Amber was on this show or when she was on the Oz Network with us, but she was just hilarious the way she would describe you about basically <laughs> describing you as just this soapy actor. Like, oh, I didn't know like what to do with Justin. Like, how was I meant to deal with him and kind of all this sort of stuff. And then when you ultimately vote her out, like, oh, I got voted out by this soapy actor and, you know, Amber, Amber, in typical Amber fashion. But was that like bit of revenge then at that point, kind of like obviously you had to save your skin by siding up with the boys, of course, because, you know, ultimately otherwise if Amber's sticking with David and Elton, you're in trouble. But no, was that I, like... I, I, honestly, I just thought, um, yeah, I laughed. And I love that people, you know, like my career my, and my career in soap, you know what I mean? It, it paid very well. But I had a big career before soap. And, uh, but, you know, I don't... The way, the way I'm seen that categorizes me as this person that fitted the bill to enter this show, Celebrity Survivor, um, it was based on the soap. I could have entered this show, been on Repsane Australia on the ski team, and then I'd yeah. be a skier and people would see me as a skier. I represent Australia doing martial arts, doing karate. I did karate for 18 years. I'm a second degree black belt. I, I could have come in as a karate champion. I could have come in as three different things, but I happen to be a soap star, whatever that is, right? So, like, I don't know. But I know in the dynamics of maybe they didn't know me too well or they had a, a, a Amber had a preconception on what a soap actor should portray themselves like or act like, 
I thought we were a team. And then I, when I started to understand the dynamics, I thought, well, to me, I was make every two days I stay on the show, I'm making bank. <laughs> I'm paying off my bike in America, my mortgage there, my mortgage here. I'm making bank. So why don't you play this game, Justin? Why don't we just get involved? This this refund. There's only one problem with that, Justin. I guess David Oldfield was playing the game pretty hard as well. So <laughs> yeah. like, you guys had a very like he was a master, or well, even Dicko said he was a puppet master. He, he really yeah. was a great player of the game, and yeah. I'm sure you probably realise that when you're playing against him. But uh, let's talk about David a bit. He he, he was the chef on the island. Uh, you know, see, it wasn't until later in the game, I guess, it seemed like you two had a bit of conflict. But what can you tell us about David Oldfield? Well, I didn't understand um, David's um, strategy. I mean, he 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 had his. He would say one thing to someone and another thing to someone else. But I guess that's a survivor strategy, isn't it? Yeah. You you say you drop a seed and you talk shit to someone, and then you talk the truth to someone else. And you lead them like it's like you're making everyone feel special, and and that's survivor. But I, 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 I had I had a problem. So did Guy Leach. We had a problem trying to grapple with that mentality of the truth of the game of Survivor is you're going to screw someone as the, as the numbers dwindle, someone gets screwed over. You don't mean it. But you've got to play that game. It's a game. Mm -hmm. And after you get rid of the last, after the first four or five people leave because they don't want to be there, it's raining, it's not their thing, they don't want to air that, they, they don't want to be that person, you've got to be that person in Survivor. You, you, it's, it, in order to stay, someone gets, you rub someone up the wrong, the wrong way. You don't mean to. And you probably want to do it down at the local pub. But in, in the game, you do. And it's unfortunate because it's not really who you are, but it's who you've got to be in Survivor. Yeah. Now, when Emma, when, when she got rid of Fiona, that was our trio. So I didn't, it, it was just nothing against Amber. But I told Amber not to get rid of Fiona. But she got rid of Fiona, so I got rid of Amber. <laughs> Why not? <Great> revenge. <laughs> it wasn't really revenge, but it was just. <laughs> You don't want to play the game because you didn't. You had a problem with Fiona, but that in the in the game having the team and the tribe, we had the numbers. If you kept Fiona, but she didn't want to play Survivor. She wanted to play Amber. So Fiona pissed her off. So get her off the show. But it, that wasn't the game of Survivor. So Which if you don't do want to play the game of Survivor, I'll vote you off too. Which do you think long term though? Let's play the what if game. Had yeah. you stuck with Fiona and Amber, had Amber not blindsided Fiona, David went, Elton went, and that was the three, do yeah. you feel you would have lasted as long? Sorry? So do you feel you would have lasted long? Like the hypothetical is that David and Elton go earlier, so Correct. therefore so you think you would have still gone to the end if you were well, with Fiona and we, Amber? Yeah, there's this it's it's not it's it's common knowledge when you come onto the show, and if you're sleeping with everyone under the same tent, and there's another group and there's another party sleeping in a tent elsewhere, you're not going to join the tent elsewhere. You right. got to look after the people under your own roof. So Amber, Fiona, and I, we were under the same roof. Whether we like knitting, chess, or gambling, doesn't doesn't matter. We were a tribe. Numbers. It's a numbers game. Would I be correct in saying that? Yes. Yeah, Survivors is numbers. You yep. need numbers to win. We had the numbers, but there was a personality conflict with them. So they weren't playing Survivor, the numbers. They were playing the, I don't know, just, I can't stay another night with this bullshit on the island. You're off. You know what it's, I mean? It's, it's so fascinating, though, because we talked a lot during our recaps. That, I mean, the two real big moves in your season was that move was was amber deciding to side with the boys and vote out fiona 
yes. then ultimately, of course, later on down the line when Gabby sides with Imogen and Nicole to vote out Wayne, and then kind of you got these two big moves that happen on both sides of the camps before yes. you get to the merge. And it's just it's always fascinating to think in a in a different universe had Amber not switched and you had a been with him, like how it would have played out differently. Oh, of course, like, it, it would have played out very differently. Again. It would yeah. have played out very differently because when we we could have we could have at least proceeded to monopolize our the way we navigated the show based on numbers, looking out for the numbers for ourselves. We had the votes. But yeah. because we came back to what Matt said, we came into this show under this social pretense. It wasn't survivor, this is what we're gonna do. It was socially, here we are on an island, let's have fun for the first few days. Let's see if we can catch some crayfish, do a bit of fishing and have a holiday in Vanuatu. But under that pretense, it was a social. If I didn't get along with you socially and you're not cool, I'm going to vote you out. And that's, and that's what was happening. Social voting, people just, our personalities clash, you're gone. It wasn't about the strategy. So after Fiona goes, then you help vote Amber out. Yes. W did you feel did you feel vulnerable at that stage, or did you feel that like Elton and, and David had your back? Like where where did you feel at that point of the game? Who else was left in with me after that? Sorry, down a bit. So what, once Amber had gone, it was you. Uh, sorry, once Fiona had gone, it was you, Amber, David, and Elton. And then when Amber went, it was just you, David, and Elton on on Moso. Yes. Well, I. It, it was a. This is just before we all joined. Yeah, this Correct. is just for the merge. Mm, Correct. So yeah. I, I must have, thinking, I must have had a bit of a concern that if we didn't join, I was obviously going to be next mm. because the guys, David and Elton, already had a bond because they started together. Yeah. See, see those, those holes, that whole strategy was the bond and the numbers from how we all started yeah. together. So the, the first five episodes was, it should have been the bond of who we're, we're, we're living t together with. And so I knew David and El Elton because it was a, all the guys stuck together. And I was kind of labeled as sticking with the girls because I never lived with the guys. So I knew I was probably going to, I knew I was probably going to go, but remember, well, five episodes in, 15, I was counting the dollars. I'd already yeah. paid off one more mortgage, so I was pretty good. <laughs> you were fine. You were fine. You were fine. Yeah. I've, got to, I've, you know, I've got to ask. I'm just, 180 grand in. I was yeah, doing, doing good. good. I, 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 I on just, a beach. You, you know what? If I if next time I ever watch your season, I'm actually going to be looking at, at, at you at travel each travel counseling, knowing that you were counting the dollars each time. Uh, ding, ding, look, ding. I would have had I if honestly I should have bought my guitar. I should have bought my zero app or my little budget app and just done my little budgeting along the way. Because just, just actually, that's all I was really thinking. You, you mentioned the guitar now. Luxury item. Was your luxury item a guitar? Because there was a shot we, I think, saw of you yes. walking on the beach at one point or going to trouble. You had a guitar. So was that your luxury item? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I must have been doing a bit of that at the time because I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought, um, I don't know, I thought I was like... Jay, Jimmy Morrison or something. No, we, we, we only saw it. No, we, we never saw you play it on the show, but yeah. we only saw it when you re-entered the show at the end, you know, obviously when you were voted out and re-entered. And, and we thought maybe that when they said, hey, you got a chance to come back in, you are probably like, hey, I'm chilling out at the resort. If I'm, if I'm coming back into this game, I'm bringing my guitar with me, you know? Like, <laughs> well, well you, you know, Matt, when I was in America, all these, I, I was very, like, all, all these print jobs and commercials I did, um, and I did for alcohol brands, they flew me to Mexico and we'd be stuck on these in Cancun and Cozumel and Cabo. We'd be on these islands for a week fil filming and I was like, damn, why don't, you, why don't I bring a musical instrument with me? And I, because the TV was shit, no reception, and playing guitar, I was with the other actors and stuff, and, and in America, everyone like, everyone wants to be a singer-songwriter, right? So, so I, I like... 
I always bring my guitar and learn from friends and everyone would just drink on the beach and play guitar. And I thought from my times in Cancun, I thought <laughs> Survivor, better watch it. I thought I was going to bring out the guitar, you know, and play a bit of wild thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> And just, closing you know, there, Matt. We're, we're all going to have a happy time together <laughs> and we're just going to play those Beatles three chords, right, and just, you know, enjoy each other's company and break wine together, right? No. But it was funny. It was a, it was a funny thought. But then, then I realised no bonding. My guitar's like so, a bond you two So were they, were they not interested in hearing you play it? Oh, I just felt like I had the word douchebag on my head if I pulled it <laughs> up and played it. I, I reckon I would have oh. laughed if you turn around and David Oldfield was using it as on the fire just to burn. Yeah. You know what? I, 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 was, I was reading, unless I was Led Zeppelin, I'm not playing it. No. Okay? It, the, oh. the amount of chords that I knew, it, it, I should have just used the strings to See, go fishing. See, Liz, Kim Johnson, she may have been, been voted out first, but she brought the thousand thread Egyptian cotton blanket or sheet, you know. At least that was something that was usable. That was the smartest move, right? <laughs> that's, that's, why you, that's why you wanted her out of there, Justin. Coach. Like, you go home. I'll take your blanket. You I'll go take home. your blanket. <laughs> and then and if one. I don't survive, I'll use the strings to hang myself. And, and throw out <laughs> we, we were wondering why we never got to see these kumbaya moments around the Vanuatu camp of you just yeah, having a sing-along. You know, but I guess you know, it believe, believe it makes or not, sense. we did have a little bit of a play. After, after, the, after the camera crews would go back to their campsite and then there was no filming. Oh, you know, I'd be on the guitar and go, ding, 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 right? On the guitar, right? Because I was bored shitless and oh, there's no camera crews along because we used to really, can I say, we used to fuck with the camera crews, right? When, when we would go up into the hills, after, after that SAS guy showed us where the food was, where the taro, where the spinach, where the sugar cane. There was a whole farm out there. So then we would, when we would go up into the mountains, I'd go to my machete and the World Cup, I think the soccer was on at the yep. same time, right? Yep. And I would go up there and we would be having a, a, gam, a, a guessing game who was winning in the World Cup. And the camera operators had these big cameras and the boom and the sound and they'll put the camera down because it's, they don't want that on TV, right? No. Us rambling bullshit. And he would drop the camera and we, I would take him on a hike to the highest part of the mountain, <laughs> right? Because that's where this sugar game plant was, right? And I got my Chevy and we would hike up this path and we'd talk about the soccer. And then I'd say, then I looked to one of the Elton little guys and said, so listen, about the strategy to vote Guy out because all of a sudden the cameras come on, the boom, come, the boom comes in, and then I look at the camera guys and go, just joking, guys. And then they would have to drop it down and we would walk back up and we'd just play with the guys all the time. Yeah, Every time we mentioned strategy, they'd bring their cameras back up. And by the time we got to the top, they couldn't even lift the cameras to take them back down the mountain to follow us because they were too tired from all the bullshit we did going up the mountain. <laughs> So I just That's what we like to hear. Just a muck around the film crew. That's brilliant. I always and, love hearing stories about that. Oh, <laughs> and I just want to know: was it literally just someone's farm, like a local's farm, that just were growing stuff, and you guys were just raping oh, and pillaging it? Literally, we'll go and pillage some mountain crop, right? And but when it came, but when we came down the mountain, there was a there was a week where we were just we were really hungry, and then we coming down and we see someone's chicken and someone's pig and we actually look at each other and went, no, we can't. <laughs> yes, we can. We're actually going to take someone's pig and take it with us down the hill and steal their chicken. I'm like, no, no, we can't do that. This is someone's, this is someone's food, right? But we were so hungry. When we started looking at these pigs, we thought, we've changed. <laughs> there's, there's, there's something that's happened on this island that makes you change. Lord of the flies. Yeah, yeah. Right? You're going that crazy. I mean, on the topic of food, one yeah. thing I want to ask before we get to the merge is the, the moment when you, David, and Elton won the steak yes. and 
David ultimately turns it into his his stroganoff, his stew, whatever it was, and and poor old Elton, all he wanted was steak. All he wanted to eat the steak. He Me just too. like he wanted like I was gonna ask like were you just as like Elton just steak, steak, steak? Didn't give a shit about the zesty salad. He wanted steak, steak, steak. Like were you at the same time there? Just were you ready to kill David? Just like fucking give us our steak, mate. You know. <laughs> All I wanted was an Outback Steakhouse, not fucking Gordon Ramsay, all right? <laughs> I, just, I just wanted a steak. <laughs> Elton, he's a rugby man. He's a champion. He's the peak. This guy's talented as all hell. We come home, we're a steak and mash guy. I don't want to come home and have stroganoff blur when I haven't eaten or won a challenge for two weeks. <laughs> I just want something. I want a bit of protein and iron. Just, just, just quickly, just quickly, we, we should mention for our video uh, audience right now, uh, Justin's got a, a sort of a, a setup behind him which he can go punch shit. So, like, if, if this is getting you angry, please go punch the shit out of oh, yeah, that yeah, makeshift just, David Oldfield with your steak. David and his steak. <laughs> oh, <laughs> which, uh, let me just turn the lights on here. Right? Just, oh, this is gold. <laughs> I'm feeling better now. Good. <laughs> All right. There it is. That's <laughs> what I wanted to do to David when he tried to put sauce on his fucking steak. <laughs> In all fairness, though, David Oldfield did go on to appear on Hell's Kitchen. So, you know, it, he didn't last too long, unfortunately. But but maybe he was auditioning at the same time, you know, for, for, for a, a, a reality cooking show. Uh, it was, uh, you know, David made me laugh, right? It's just... His insightfulness into into the steak and everything. He, he, he doesn't realise there's 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 a bunch of hungry, starving, grown men next to him. That that probably, if I had a switchblade, I probably would have chopped David up and cooked him on the barbecue <laughs> myself. <laughs> well, just quickly, and we don't want to harp on it too much, but was there much talk about politics with him out on the island at all? Well, I'm not sure. I didn't know. I've been in America since 19, I was in America for a long time. So I, I, I'm not, I didn't know enough about One Nation or, or Pauline, which, which Pauline was quite nice to me on Dancing with the Stars. So, yeah. so who, 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 who am I to judge yeah. like, about the politics? I mean, um, uh, you know, there's an old actor saying, you know, never, never talk about politics or on set. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, and that's what that's why I wondered because, I, like, I, I'm a big believer. Everyone's entitled to their own political view. You know that that shouldn't be an issue on how you view someone. So, yeah. but I, I was that's and that's why I didn't want to harp on it too much. But yeah. I was just interested to see if there was much talk about politics with him or or whether it was this, hey, guys, like, let's just not talk about that and talk about other stuff. Yeah, yeah. well, I, um, I'd already got to know Pauline Hanson on dancing. So then I, I was going to say to David, say, was, was Pauline really good? <laughs> 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 I don't know. But, you know. You didn't quite get that far. The, the, the probing like ones. Sorry, when, sorry. When, it, when it came to the merge. Yes. Now you sort of mentioned before about, you know, you were sort of perceived as working with the girls because you'd started on Moso, you'd mainly right. been with the girls, but you'd obviously formed quite a, a bond then with David and Elton on those final days of Moso. Yes. Were you ever tempted to, to keep that sort of side up with, with them, get, uh, you know, the boys guy on board and kind of form a guys alliance or were you always kind of focused on switching and, and, and staying with the girls? Because we didn't really get to see sort of that vote when Guy ultimately goes home. We didn't really get to see what you were thinking, whether you were maybe swayed to work with the guys no, more so than look, the girls. I, I don't know. I never got a chance to be with the guys. I mean, I, um, but I, I I, I do know that um, being with the girls was the really wonderful, nice, smart, intelligent ladies. I mean, they, 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 they had a lot to say. Like in our downtime, if we're not talking about the game, um, everyone, you know, the girls, the girls loved to have a chat. I mean, it was great. I mean, why, why wouldn't she not want to be in an island with a bunch of smart young ladies that that were educated that were intelligent that had that had an opinion and um 
and that you know you, you you're killing time. Yeah. And it was it was wonderful hang, hanging out with them. It was, it was a nice experience. And and also we 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 did have similar friends and similar similar topics. And 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 honestly, probably you never saw this on the camera, but they they got to talk to me about other stuff. I mean, we there there there's more to us. We were known on the show for whatever TV shows we did, but there are a lot more. Um, there's a lot more to us than the TV shows that we did and what we bring to the table and who we are as people and how, and our, and our families and what we do for charity and, and what, and what we, and what we love to embrace in life and what motivates us and, and what gets us out of bed. There was so much more to us than just the dynamic of the game. And it was, and it, it was, it was a great opportunity for me and just hang out and, and meet these in, in, incredible ladies on the show. It's good. I've got to ask one question before yeah. we get to the big talking point that every listener is dying for us to talk to you about from what happened on your season. You, you mentioned before about Pauline, David. I've got yeah. to be that guy, Justin. I've got to ask you and Gab. There was some flirtatious stuff going on out there. Were you two ever, uh, you, you know, was this ever something more than we ever got to got to see? Can we get to the bottom of this? Well, I think Gab and I... We know we known each other in LA, and we known each other a while, and we had established a friendship where we talked about our partners with each other. Um, so that kind of bond put the it laid the foundation where you and I were always going to be good friends, and it's and this day and I I lived in Hollywood. I mean you. You sh because your friends are very, very easy on the eye and very attractive, it shouldn't all of a sudden, it doesn't mean there has to be something else. I mean, um, she's just a smart, funny, charismatic woman. And she's such a, she's a, she's, got, she's really like funny and smart. And the way, the way she just, you know, tells it the way it is. And she's beautiful. And I got to cuddle her every night and spoon between her and Kimmy. I mean, these are my, I would like my, 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 my mates. It just happens to be that they were beautiful, attractive women, but they were my mates. And I, and I don't cross the line or think anything less. I give them the same honesty and respect as, um, it's what's on, it's what they have on the inside, you know? Great answer. I like that. There's there's none of this like middle ground there where I'm trying to read in between the lines. I know that David Oldfield at the end of that book bullshit. You know the Naomi Craig stuff last season, Matt. Like we got a solid answer. That's what I like to, <laughs> to hear. Justin, I've got to, I've got to ask. This is yep. the burning question, right? We we we've done all twelve episodes of your season, and yep. and to me, the biggest mystery in the history of Australian Survivor is what happened with you and the allegations of, of bribery that you were offering money to players. It, 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 the thing that still to me baffles me to this day is that it was barely, like it was glossed over. It happens, Imogen brings it up. It, I don't know if it was just edited differently that we never heard you talk about it. Just what, what happened? Like, did you bribe people? If so, what were you bribing them with? Like, what what the fuck was happening out there, Justin? Answer this. It's 15 long years later, bribery allegations. Give us the goss. Come on. Okay. Where where do I begin with that one? Um, so let's, let's, let's first of all make – a foundation, a platform. The base of this platform is now a business to me. I'm very business minded, business driven, and I that's the way I I work hard to invest. So this was a business. So in order to operate like a business, you can operate like a like you can screw everyone over and everything, but it's worthless unless it's a business first. You got to you got to be, and, and, and you try to have some, um, I don't know, integrity about running this business. And you do your best. You have all your, you, you, you try to rise above, how, 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 how can I work this out? Because going back to Matt before, about every two days was, was money. 
to me was an episode, was a payday. And I'm thinking that's that goes to that mortgage, that goes to that payment. What can I pay the next two days? How do I survive to make my mortgage in Utah? How do I how do I pay off the my Suzuki 1000 TLR race bike? <laughs> how, how, how do I pay that off? Um, I've got to stay another two days. Okay, so in another two days, I'll be able to pay my motorcycle off. What am I going to do? Right, um, everyone's leaving. It's raining. There's a tropical shower. There's a storm. King wants out. This one's out. Everyone's socially in this game. That's what we said, right? When everyone's, they smarter. Yeah, let's fucking, let's give it a go. Let's hang out. It's on an island. We're all friends. Let's have a good time. No, but you got to play. Eventually, you got to play this game. And then when people were like, no food, the women and myself weren't winning challenges. We weren't eating. We were starving. We were hungry. It was raining. It was a storm. We were wet, cold, miserable, and starving. I don't need this. They were saying, it's what the fuck am I doing here? This, this isn't fun. The guys, David Elton, they've got their numbers because they, they've got their thing. So I'm thinking, well, how do I keep the numbers? Mentally, I'm an, I'm an athlete and strong. I've got a strong achievement of mental discipline. If you know, if you did karate and you get punched and kicked and knocked down, you've got to get back up on the horse again. You've got to just take the pain. I'm mentally, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it because I've got, I've got a goal to pay my mortgage. Mentally, I'm strong to have whatever earth throws at me. I'll give it a shot. Now, I've just got to keep there. Now it's a number game. So they're the three things. So the third thing being now it's the numbers game. Mentally, I can stay. Physically, I'm in for it. And I've got a goal being paying off my mortgage. So who do I need to stay in the game? Everyone's jumping ship. They've had enough. They they just were like, I, you know, Justin, you should, you do well at this. I didn't ask for them to say that to me. They said, you do well at this. Because because I'm like, I can bring it on, you know? I mean, I put my hand up for everything. But then I stay, and then I think a few of the girls, um, since the beginning, they were like, I'm just going to stay one more day or two days, and then can you guys vote me off? I mean, this, this was the conversation. All my tribe weren't... 300% in the game to stay from the first period, time frame. I don't yeah. know, four or five days, six days. They weren't, they weren't. Um, Their minds weren't in it. They were, they were basically they ready to it. go. They were ready to go. And was this so, all of them? Was this, was, was each of them saying this? Or was there any one in particular that was saying like, well, vote me out, I'm done? Like, they just, it, it was tough. You know, they just weren't, they just, you know, they didn't think they would feel they would get to eventually where they, yeah, they, they, they switched gear. They didn't switch gear in the beginning. I did. I was in it. I was in it as, as a business. But they, but they were like plainly, you know, they'll be careful. They're, they're just like, you know, it can't be too bad, you know, da, da. They, they felt uncomfortable with the politics. There's a bit of backstabbing. There's a bit of issues because we all had careers in front of the camera. So we're all just like, Oh God, I, I really don't want to show this on, on national te te television, you know, um, talking behind someone's back. It's a big cockroachy, snakey, you know? So, so I, I was just, you know, um, I think, uh, I trusted, I think I said to Nicole, I, and I, I, I think one of the girls was leaving. Um, I think I said, I think I said to Nicole, look, we both have the same agent. I'm going to get voted out if you don't stay because I think the guys had the numbers. But if the girls could stay, 
whoever it was, um, I would keep the number. But they wanted to leave. So I said, well, look, if you stay, I'll get this amount of money for the episode. I'll just give you half my episode share. Just wow. keep, just keep me in the game. Wow. Don't, 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 don't leave. Don't vote yourself out. Cause, cause Kim had voted herself out. People would, yeah. would just vote themselves out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was horrible weather and it was starving and the women, it wasn't fair. The, the women, the female tribe herself weren't winning. You had Guy Leach, Elton, David, winning all the fish, winning all the steak. Winning. We're hungry. We're starving. We're tired. We're cold. You didn't want to be there. So why the f just vote me out. So that with that kind of energy, I was like, fuck, keep staying. Just hang in there. I'll feed. I'll just, just hang in there and go out next round. Because if we lose, the guys are going to vote me out because it's a numbers. Well, somehow that was misunderstood. And yeah, it was, uh, if you call that a bribe, I call it a donation. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yep. Yep. I wasn't Mal bribing anyone. I was, yep. I, was, <laughs> I was creating a financial opportunity. Well, can I, just, can I just jump in there really quickly? When you were saying that to them, like, were they going, okay, were they like going like, yes, I'll, I'll stay if you pay me. Like, were they accepting? I mean, how do they misunderstand that? Well, I had to pay everyone. They, it, right. it, became, a, it became a fucking class action lawsuit. <laughs> it, 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 it became, well, if one person thought they were going to get a handout and the other person found out, well, well I should get paid too. I mean, all of a sudden, it was, it, all of a sudden, it just... I became the bad guy. You were like the Pablo Escobar. You were just having to pay everyone off. Buddy, El Chapo, all over yes. again. I was like, this This was, you know, you, you, you've got to take care of everyone. Was everyone this all caught? Was, was this all caught on camera or would you do this up of in the hills? Not. and? Oh, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, it's like, you know, see, like that's where it's like, we talked a lot about it in that episode because it is one of the strangest ever episodes Thank of Australian you know, Survivor. Proof, right? Well, yeah. the, I don't want the Survivor ICAC commission coming <laughs> after me. Well, it's just, it's that, it's that oddity because in today's Survivor, they would never, ever let this not happen off camera because there has been many incidents, particularly in US Survivor, where something's happened off camera and they've legitimately said, no, you yeah, need to do that again. We have to capture it. No, so no. it's, and, and it's, it's so, because like when all these, you know, you hear it in the episode, Imogen sort of starts talking about it. She gives up an immunity. She accuses you in tribal council. It comes out of nowhere. There's no explanation. Boom, you vote it out. And this is where it's just, it's odd. And it's like, I just, it's hard to see why Channel 7 wouldn't put something in there if they're obviously not getting it on camera. Like, it just, it just came out of nowhere. You're because, gone. Because, because Channel 7 didn't know that as talent, as, as that other the producer are those celebrities. I don't really give a fuck what he thinks, who we are. We are people and we are smart, intelligent, and they had their own business plan and we weren't doing their business plan. I am my own business plan. I got, I wore the producers out, the cameraman in the beginning, chasing up the hill, right? So you eliminate the competition, right? Then yeah. when it got down to on cam, off camera, on camera, they were too tired to get all my negotiations. And that's, and that's just, it's just not, it's, you just would not get away with it. Now channel 10 right now, there was something happening and that didn't get off camera. No way. You're not getting away with that, which it, and this is what we talked about in the episode, Justin, was that yeah. it, it was interesting reading the fan boards and we, we went back and kind of read a lot of the people's opinions on this. At the end of the day, if you are not specifically told you cannot do this, then to me personally, I'm like, well, good on you. If you've got a if you've got a way to keep people around to keep you in the game and it's not a rule, you're not doing anything wrong. You're playing well, how you want to play the game, and I, it I totally, helped you. I totally agree with you. I mean, uh, there's an old saying. I, there's a few big international races, and I ski. And it's called a Chinese downhill. It's from the top to the bottom, and there's no rules. 
<laughs> Whoever gets down the bottom wins. Yeah. And how do you get down the bottom if, if you need to, on the way down, you just Go do it, it, you know? Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's the, 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 the winner at the end. And I, I just, some of the producers just, I don't know, they just, um, some of the cameramen are, I don't want to follow Justin again. He's going to, he's going to lead us up a coconut tree and we're going to like, you know, <laughs> So it, it's really that strategy, like just to, to put this into perspective, you've, you've dicked with the camera people so much that they're like, fuck this guy, we're not doing it. So yes. then it gets to a point where you're going, right, I've played these guys, now I can start offering money to these people. Like, this is like brilliant strategy. You're literally <laughs> playing the camera crew so you can further yourself in the game by not having them film you doing these things, well, which they don't know about. Right. <laughs> Did, did it get to the point where shit, you're literally wow. paying off, you're having to pay off everyone, and next second you're like, Dicko's got his hand out. <laughs> 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 it might have been the thing. only one on more money was, than you, Justin. <laughs> I was getting charcoal from the fire and writing everyone's 10 digit bank numbers <laughs> on my hand. I owe so, you. So I just needed a routing number, and I would have been set. A routing <laughs> Did you pay that. anyone? Did you end up actually paying anyone? No, I guess to to when when my opportunity for this came to a a misunderstanding was when other people got involved and were were their sounding board to what was happening. Um, there, there 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 was a light bulb. I I um, ignited this light bulb halfway through where the girls said to themselves, what the fuck? We can win this. We can do this. I think I just created this ammunition to, to go, we don't need like Justin's extra help, bit of cashola. We can, we, we can, we're nearly there. I'm going to do this. And, and I think that's brilliant. I think if, if I, I, I just, if that, if, if that wasn't the template in the beginning, then that negotiation wouldn't have come to fruition, right? This is but fascinating. Because that dynamic wasn't happening and that energy, that universe, that whatever that was happening, people were not in it to win it. They yeah. were going with the flow and I had to create another opportunity for them to, to stay in it. When, when they thought about it, they went, why do we need Justin? We can do this ourselves. And my hat goes off to you. Good, good luck to you. If that's what it took me to throw in, you know, a couple of wire transfers or negotiate, why not? Which Matt, like, like let's, 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 let's clarify this, right? So yes. we're covering a season here that the majority of Australian Survivor fans barely acknowledge. They think this doesn't exist, this isn't real Survivor. We have just had someone admit that they fucked with the camera crew to the point where they didn't want to film them anymore, so they've played the camera people. Correct. They get to a point where they're playing people on the game, offering them money to stay in the game in order to benefit themselves, which, again, is not against the rules, to no. which that then ignites a fire within them to think we can win the game, which ultimately then leads them to voting out David, and then by having David voted out, then that creates this opportunity for Justin, who's come back in the game. This is like 18 degrees of separation here to create extra levels of how this season should be considered more of a season of Australian Survivor. And the only thing that would have made all this better if this show was sponsored by Western Union. That's, yeah. the, only, that's the only thing. If, if Celebrity Survivor ended up being sponsored by Western Union. Which it's just it's fascinating, Justin, because, again, it goes into that level you're saying a misunderstanding. You get voted out... Because of this misunderstanding, the girls wake up, we want to play the game. You literally have Gabby, who is supposedly your, your number one friend in this game at that point, siding with everyone to vote you out as well. What was that feeling like when you got voted out? You get back to Ponderosa, uh, you're facing I, Elton and Guy and Gabby stabbed you in the back. Like, how were you, you feeling know, at that point? You know, Ben, I felt that was my only demise or re if, 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 if I had a little regret, it's that I didn't bring Gabby in on what I was trying to. So she didn't do. know. She, didn't she actually know. didn't know. No. Okay. And she, and she, she felt, um, um, I, I, she, she felt, um, disrespected. I think that I, that I should, I was very close to her 
And well, that makes was, sense. Just to jump and, in there, because like we and, we talked in that why she and I told she you, says I that. get that yeah. with Gabby, and she was yeah. kind of bummed out. You know, she's like, Justin, yeah, you, know, you could have told me. Like, you could have, we could have, you know, I I I I, I screwed up, right? I should have. But no one can survive. We're just talking about. I just a, a game plan that I should have just. But Gabby was on the other island with the boys, and then, um, you know. There could be a number of reasons, you know, when, when you're hungry and you're starving, you're not thinking things through and people want to jump shit and people want to be voted out and the weather's no good. I mean, um, I, 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 it wasn't, it was an investment strategy into one person that should have been into the rest of the tribe. Which, which also <laughs> the the day, day. Which at the end of the day then, because, and we're just jumping ahead a little bit here. Yeah you lose by one vote. Gabby doesn't vote for you to win, which was surprising. No. Was that then what cost you that final vote at the end? No, it wasn't surprising because Gabby said, well, I think Gabby would have voted for me if I did it come to her when, because when I approached Nicole, her and I have the same agent. So that transaction was really easy because we get paid through our agent and the mm -hmm. agent takes a commission. So Nicole and I, I just thought I could trust Nicole because we're the same agent. And when I get paid for that app, we'll just get our manager to split the, the money. I mean, that's a no brainer. I mean, because the money was going through a second party, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'll, I'll stick to my word, I'll, I'll, you know, and, and our, our, our manager can split that app and give it to you. I was making so much money. <laughs> and I just thought, fuck it, you know? But then all of a sudden, um, then she told Imogen, then Imogen, then everything. Then this, it, it became this big thing that I didn't mean to happen. I just wanted to keep the numbers with the voting because no one was giving a shit to stay in. And because all of a sudden I did this unethical thing about a financial opportunity, all of a sudden, people, all of a sudden, they, they put the game face on. They're like, I'm in it to win it now. But before, Wait, before, you should before have had sort of, a long time ago. Before we move that on, would have been go on before we move on and go on sort of with some of the other stuff that happened towards the end, I mean, again, just based on the editing, it was sort of odd. Like, was there more questioning? Were you defending yourself more at that tribal when you got voted out saying like, hang on a minute, you're misunderstanding. Like, was there more of that that we didn't see? No, because to me, if I say to you, um, I want a yes and no answer. So do you want, this is my manager, this is this, this can be good. Is this something is of, um, I, I, are you interested? Yes or no? So to me, whatever other discussion, if it was, it was a no, it was like, they don't feel comfortable. Okay, I'm done. So I didn't get involved in the perplexity of the righteousness to what I did or the integrity to what I did. It's a fucking game. It's a business, right? Business trip, let's, as a very famous yes, American player yes. said. Yes. Let's not, let's, you know, let's not get caught up in more than what it really is. You know, they're going to forget about us after this. So don't, don't, <laughs> don't worry your two cents worth. Now, Justin, before we get into the, the end part of your game, where, where you're lucky enough to come back and obviously get to the end, yep. you, spent a, you spent a couple of days off the island in, yep. in, a, in a hotel. Yes. This is the only time this has happened in Australian Survivor. Normally now, if any returning players, they go to like another island or another place where they're still eating rice and all that. So this is obviously a bit different in your season, your celebrities, your, you know, it wouldn't happen today, but what what happened in those couple of days when you're in this hotel? Were you just were you eating up? I was only there for a night. I I I I wasn't there that long. I think yeah. Guy was. Um, yeah. But hold it. So this is the way I can paint the picture. I never won a challenge till the end. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. I never I never got any food till I got a piece of steak over three weeks. Um. Everyone else had won their, their little day on the beach, having hot showers, shaving in front of the mirror, looking at women in bikinis. Everyone, everyone had their day in the sun. 
<laughs> that, was, that was a fucking dirty moment, wasn't it? Over there? Anyway, everyone, everyone, everyone had their day in the sun, right? Oh. So I would treat that as that was my um, little win of a challenge. That I got off, I got to have a shower, I got to eat something and come back. Everyone else was eating, going off, going on their day daydream islands. I mean, is, was it really that bad to, 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 to really play a, a, a negative thing that I didn't do Survivor because I got to get a good night's sleep for once? No, I suppose yeah. that, that's actually, it's actually a good point. I guess I never thought of it like that, and, and I'm glad you, you brought that up because you're right. I guess, like, you know, we saw Nicole Dixon had a reward where she had a husband and got to spend a night away. And, Correct. You know, so you're right. I mean, Guy, I think Guy was there for about six days, maybe six nights, where if you're only there for the two days, I mean, you're right. You get you get a meal, a couple of meals and back in. To be honest, you're right. I mean, you look at whatever else. It was just a reward. It was just a, yeah. it was a one-night reward for me. Yeah. And everyone had so many re- rewards. They got to feast watch people jump off the trees and do and 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 do the those vines an amazing uh traditional indigenous experience and got to eat eat and eat and everyone got a reward i never won any rewards so um, up until i got off and had a shower i mean Mm -hmm. i i i thought i treated it as a reward i didn't but once once you had a shower and you ate, I was back in the game. So it, it, it can only be looked at like a quick little reward. I didn't, I didn't go off and, you know, and start another life and get on my computer <laughs> uh, and, you know, and all of a sudden go from, go from massages and go to the, the Maldives surfing. I just went off and had a fucking shower and a, and a meal. That's it. <laughs> Which you, you say that in the in your at the final trial, you mentioned about how sort of guy was out for a bit longer. But at what point then do you get told? Does does David Mason tap you on the shoulder and go, "Guess what? You got a chance to get back in the game." I'm not sure who told us. They just I had already worked out. There's a twist because because I'm a numbers and I worked out the, my own budget and <laughs> I knew, <More> money. <laughs> I, I, I knew there was a there wasn't enough episodes to sustain the criteria time length of the show, so so there had to be an extra episode in there, mm. and there had to be enough episode the amount of episodes there weren't enough contestants to fit the amount of episodes in the billing that is what I was there to do, so. So something something had to um, something had to, to play a part. Which like, were you like, then like they, excited? There needed to be more contestants. Yeah. Which were you excited when you were told, great, another chance, not only just for the bank balance, but to, to get back in the game and, and have, still have a crack at winning it? Yeah. I was excited because, um, first of all, it was pretty boring on that fucking island in the hotel room. <laughs> um, and there was not much to do in Benoatu and um, where we were staying on the island. I mean, um, I'm not a big um, – my stomach had shrunk. I wasn't – I can't exactly eat all the craft services because my stomach had shrunk. Um, you can have a drink. Like, you didn't – when you went off the island and you went back to to the room, you really just had a nice hot shower. I don't, I don't. You couldn't eat and drink because you were sick because your stomach had shrunk. So you didn't go off there and go, oh my god, this is like McDonald's and a field day. You don't. You you, you you just went off and you just had a nice meal. You had a shower and that was it. When I was told the opportunity was coming back on, I think I was sitting when we got told. I was at the dinner table with Guy Leach and and I think Guy and I looked at each other and we went, <laughs> <laughs> let the games begin again. Nice. So um so when so when I think we we were uh when that night when the producers came up to me 
or the assistant, I think the assistant AD or the second AD said, um, you know, you're going back on the show. Um, with all the dynamics and what had happened in the show and what happened to Guy and what happened to me and I got, I felt like, you know, I was, you know, um, I was kind of bummed that I was misunderstood. Guy being the threat, he was, he was thrown out. He, he had his, so I said to Guy, I said, Guy, I said, buddy, you want to make us, you got a strategy? <laughs> we, if we get back in, it's like Guy and I are now in our own house on our own island. And we had now bonded. Just like in the beginning, you bond with your teammates. Well, we had bonded in the bath, in the buffet at the, at the hotel. Over some real steak. <laughs> Over some real steak. Without David Oldfield's fucking cooking. Right? <laughs> and the zesty salad. <laughs> and we, without creme brulee. We said, you know, what do we got to do? How do you want to do it? And let's do it. And really? we just like, I mean, that's where we thought, like, I'm, I'm smiling because it was like, when we got, when we had that opportunity, God, I went, you know, this is going to be great. How, 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 do, you, how do you want to play this? And okay. that's the beautiful part of it because, like, we've, we we talked at length. Like, I I I still call it Justin the worst twist in Australian Survivor history. But that's it's not your fault. It's not Guy's fault. Like, you're playing the game that's presented to you. Uh, you, you know, the way it was executed, to me, it is it, do it earlier in the game. Do that at the moment. Yeah. Don't do it two days remaining or how because that's where the problem is. But at the end of the day, yours and Guy's game coming back in was nearly flawless to to able to get the girls on side to flip on David because at that point then, as we heard from David a couple of weeks ago, out he's saying like, well, you know, that was clearly going to be their downfall and just things like that. It was just it was just fascinating to watch kind of how you two did that. But before we kind of get into the M part, just that challenge. Now I gotta I gotta ask you this because you you very nearly fucked up straight away on that first question because we, we question the rules over that. Generally in a survivor challenge like that, if it's whoever gets it wrong is out on the spot. You and Gab get that question wrong straight away. Technically, you and Gab should have been eliminated right then, so it should have been Elton and Guy going into the game if they had have played it how generally it works. So you got lucky there. But I want to ask you the question. Do you See if you remember this 15 years later, Justin. This is the question that you were asked that you and Gab got wrong. Now, uh, see if you remember this. Again, you've got no context of the story, unless you remember watching this episode recently. Ramata's first goal when he conquered the land was to wipe out other tribes. True or false? True. Hey, well, that's correct. You would have gotten it. Uh, no, it's false, actually. Just teasing you. It is false. <laughs> so you got it wrong again. But then the tiebreaker question was Ramata's wives were not given carver before who being is, strangled. Who, sorry, who is Ram he was the chief of the of the the, the area. So in the he was story, kind of, so, yeah. He was, so this in, is in a story that Dicko told about Ramada and take. Was usually, I get Matt to read out the whole story because Matt's the guy who likes to read oh, these okay. things. I, but, I thought uh, this was just a random question. I no, no, no. That, so this I was the challenge Dicko. again. Oh, yeah, Dicko had to read out a story. And we had to remember. Yeah. So Dicko Dicko read out the story, oh, and yeah. the first part of the challenge was okay. uh, whoever got it wrong was eliminated. Wow. You and Gab got that first one wrong. Okay. Then the tiebreaker question was Ramada's wires were not given carver before being strangled, true or false? The answer to that was true. You got it right. Gab got it wrong. Gab was eliminated. But technically, how generally we survivor both challenges work, yeah. you both okay. should have gone. But you yeah. were lucky then. But then you do the whole memory challenge. Elton fucks up. You're in the game. What, what is that feeling like when you're back in the game, though? Like, you've gone through all that shit. You've gone this great little alliance with Guy. You've gone, ha, ha, ha. And now all of a sudden, you two are in. So it's on. Like, are you just feeling so confident and fresh at that point? Going no, I'm just game? thinking, Guy, let's action our plan. Mm. Right. I'm just going, Guy. And, he, and, and, and I, can, I, can, I can hear his voice going, it's fucking game on. He had a bone to pick for whatever reason. He left the show, um, and he was like, "And he loves Survivor. He watched all the episodes, yeah. and 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 he's he's such a, he's such a great guy. Um, and 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 he's just 
he's so honest and, and direct and, and, and he's just, you know, this is the way it is. He just tells it, you know, I, I love it. So we had such just upstanding, strong, tell it the way it is stories. And, you know, we, we had a game plan. We, I, I guess it was like a, it was like a man's handshake. It's like, look each other in the eye. This is what we're going to do. And we thought about it, but you can think about it all you want, talk about it all you want, but until you're in the game, you can't action it. So when we both were in it, we gave each other a smile like, it's time to action all that shit we're talking about at the buffet. I'm like, fucking cool. Let's do it. We're Let's like, do look, it. get to the candy store. Let's go and eliminate all the candy and get into it. And I think we were, we were, um, we were excited and we didn't know what we wanted to, we didn't know how to, do it, but we knew what we needed to do is get rid of all these people and and then go about how we're gonna do it. Well, he it was just a game of chess. So was on. that that main aspect the saying you didn't know what to do, but was the main conversation like obviously breaking the three of them up, but was it the focus on like let's get David on side to break the girls up, or was it let's get the girls on side to go against David? Like, what was the main angle you thought was to take? No, so we knew the girls were Bill and Ben, right? They were the flower pot men, right? <laughs> they were in, right? And we knew David Alpha was the weed. You know that little weed, you know, gets in in the in the in the middle, right? But so there was guy and me. So I I already knew Guy and David, whatever their thing was on the island, it's not there anymore because, you know, we shared some carrot cake together and looked each other in the eye. You know what I mean? Like we knew, <laughs> we knew what, we knew how we we're going to go about this, right? But David had talked his, his shit to everyone and his shit was starting to smell. So, so... Some with people, it smelled a bit too much, and other people, it was just whatever. But he he was very charming, and um, and very matter of fact, and um, and and he he portrayed he was the he was true to his word in, in his uh, in his communication, and and he, he was quite forthright in what he said, and and he backed it up with it, with intelligence, and and he had a good understanding of how you know, of how the response, he believed in the response that his, his message was getting the right response that made him feel comfortable. But the problem was he was doing the same fucking message to everyone, so the messages were confusing. Because when we actually got together and talked about the game, the messages were a bit different. You see, you got if I can get sidetracked on that point, the, the messages and the game, you have a bunch of people that already have television careers, but no one wants to air their dirty laundry out in front of the camera. So a lot of that strategy, game strategy, we weren't playing all the time on camera. We didn't want to, half of us anyway, and I certainly didn't want to. I was, I was talking strategy swimming 50 feet out in the fucking ocean where the camera crew couldn't get to me, <laughs> right? I was leaving them up in the mountain with the coconuts. So I, so a lot of the game playing or any secret handshakes was not on camera. It, 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 was, it was off camera. So you, you, you didn't get, because if we told that on camera, when the producer pulls you into the beach for 10 minutes and asks you what's your take on how things are going and you tell them your strategy, then they, then the next person they get, they drop that seed of that bullshit in that actor's head. So then they're just feeding off all the talent on the, all the contestants. They're just feeding off them with their own, you know, I heard that David says this, is this true, Emma? Like, and Amber's thinking, fuck, is that what David said? It's what the producer said. It's not exactly what David said, but the producer is feeding that to the contestant. So if you had your strategy off camera, then off camera, you, 
the producers couldn't get all the information off you because they didn't have it. So all that stuff on camera, the way the way that the way that game functions and the way they they producers work the contestants is it's that's how they feed the Chinese whisperer. That's that's how they spread the bullshit. Is they if someone feeds them a note on camera when they're doing their 10 minute to camera on the produce uh, on the beach and the producers ask them the question and they give them a note, then they write that note down. And then the net, if that plays a role in the other person's storyline, they feed that note to the other person. So, um, I didn't have many notes. They couldn't find many notes of me because I never did it on camera. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Cause yeah, a lot of people often say, you know, how much manipulation are there with production and something, but you're right. Like as a player, you have to think about those things. You know, if you're going to reveal your whole game plan to production, you know, they, they mightn't, they might necessarily say, Oh, Justin said this, but, but you know, no. are they going to try to ask a question to the next you know, contestant, uh, you know, in, cause, cause they're trying to get a storyline going. It's, so it's exactly Matt. So yeah, for example, if I said to the producer on the beach who pulls me up for 10 minutes for my camera time at 11 a.m. in the morning, and I, and when you're fresh awake, you've had your little porridge, they get you and they get you before the day. And, and I say, um, David, Olf, if I, if I say, you know, David Oldfield, uh, he's an arsehole, then when they go to David, they won't say, David, Justin thinks you're an arsehole. They'll go to David. Uh, so it seems you and Justin, you're not getting along. And he, he doesn't, he's not really supportive or has really got your back the way you think he has, David. Like they've just, yeah. they've plotted a seed in David's head of something that I may have said to someone, to them back two hours before. And that's the way they, then David goes, oh, well, Justin's this, this, this and that. But the problem is I'm not like that on television, on camera. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to go and spread all that bullshit in front of the camera. I'm not going to give the producers and the editors of the show and David Mason the opportunity to pull my shit apart on camera and hang it out on Australian television. Did production ever say to you that they wanted more from you or, or did they just yeah, they not? Did. They yeah. told me not to have conversations out in the ocean. <laughs> At that point, it's like, what are, you, what are you going to do? Would you keep me off the show? Like, I mean, it's I kind of... Tell you, tell you the cameraman to look like Aquaman. Come out and fucking find me. Which I, mean, <laughs> I love. I love hearing that. Like one of my my favorite winners of the US seasons was a uh, player Danny Boatwright. One season eleven, and and a lot of people have always questioned her win. But I interviewed her many years ago, and and her thing was a similar thing. She worked in TV. She knew how producers worked, so she kept her cards close to her chest because she knew how it would be used against her. And I love that because you are Correct. manipulating you are manipulating more than the players. You're manipulating the game. And one thing that I always loved about your confessionals, and we talked a lot about it throughout our our episode recaps, was kind of almost this I don't want to say it was scripted, but you have this way of delivering your confessionals, which is very you're aware that you're on TV. You're doing it in like a strategic but entertaining way. Like it was it was so you said you did Shakespeare. It was almost Shakespearean, Justin, the way you kind of delivered these lines. And it was just, it was entertaining but informative, and yet you were still keeping things close to your chest. So ben, it was you just... Hit the nail, buddy, you hit the nail on, 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 on the head. I just, I'm, I've been in an edit suite so many times. And so even when you, when I was 21, when, when you cut your show reel, you don't want to cut, you don't want to, no matter what the scene, if you're doing a one minute scene with someone, you don't put any more footage of the other actor you're working with on your show reel. It's not about them. Like you yeah. learn how to cut, edit and do show reels and, and, and be in those big edit suites. I've had so much experience of understanding that temp, that craft, that system that I knew Think, I always put myself in other people's shoes first. Yeah. And if I've got to put myself in the producer's shoes, I will say to myself, how are they going to edit me on television? And how are they going to plant their seed, what I'm saying, how are they going to deliver that seed to the other 
cast member or contestant in the show who's going to come on and do their piece to camera in 30 minutes time what seed am i going to plant with this producer that they will deliver to the next person on the beach in front of their camera which the thing i love about that too is because i've I've, sort of in a weird hypocritical way of what i just said i I'm, i'm very critical a lot of the time of how in a modern survivor on channel 10 we have a lot of players who kind of go full tilt on the I'm going to drop a sound bite because I know I'm going to get screen time for this, right? Whereas whereas your way of doing it was just naturally, and like, and going based on what you're saying, like you knew how to do that in a natural manner. Like it's, yes. it's, it's just, it was just fascinating to watch. And I think I said right at the very beginning of covering this season that you were maybe one of the most fascinating players that I was looking forward to talking about because you're not so black and white. You're not a David Oldford. We're going to come on here and say, this guy's brilliant because he does this, he does this. Imogen, she does this, she does this guy. He's like, you've got so many layers to you, Justin, which I'm loving this interview because we're unraveling those layers <laughs> to kind of understand how you played this game and what you brought to this game. It's, it's fascinating. You know, to, to, ben, you are, you're correct, but to, to, keep it, to keep it simple, my, my only understanding from all the television I've done is just, just think about what I, what are you prepared to do that your parents are prepared to watch at home? Like don't do anything that's going to upset. I have a lot of love. I've lost my father now, but my mum and dad are old school. They grew up as world war two babies. They grew up with nothing. Um, my grandfather had coupons from the war. I mean, I got taught old school, you know, how to appreciate, respect, always say thank you, always be grateful. Um, you know, if, 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 if you want something, wait till it's Christmas till you get it. You won't get that present till Christmas and it might be July when, when you ask, you know, it's like, you just really appreciate. So, so my thing on Survivor was, well, try to have a little bit of dignity in the show. It's, it is hard to navigate that. But don't do anything that mum and dad's going to upset mum and dad. I mean, it doesn't matter yeah. what age you are. Your parents are your parents. You should yeah. have the utmost respect. 100%. You know, and, 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 and you know, I don't, they've, all their friends are going to watch. You know, remember, I've got 20 years of television before mum and dad, before – previous to Survivor. So all the shows, you know, they're familiar. They've watched my career, my journey on television. I don't want Survivor to be the hatchet of my journey. And you're playing yourself play, this time I, as I well. I play a cock on the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're playing, I this is why you. Why do that to myself? Yeah, you're not, not playing just, another character. Yeah, just... Yeah. You know, if, 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 if you've got to say a few things or you think things, something pisses you off, just don't do it on camera. Just, just quickly but, on that, just really quickly, while we're on the topic of your parents, one question I wanted to ask, and I feel like it's yeah. the perfect time to ask this now, you say in your words and on, when you're on that raft on the way to the final challenge, you say, you know, you're proud of your game and you, you think your parents will be proud of you. Did they, did they say to you afterwards that they were, like, proud of the way you played or were they along the journey watching the show? Yeah, yeah, they were very... Proud of me because, you know, my my father, he's 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 a very, very kind, generous, very strong, powerful businessman, and um, you know he's 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 had a lot to do with charity and 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 he and he built retirement villages for the for for the elderly and without profiting himself and his. He pioneered the Surf Life Saving Association. He's done so many great, wonderful things um, that I just wanted Dad to be proud. But he's he's my dad's proud when financial year comes around and the numbers back up what bullshit you're saying. <laughs> right? You can have all the excuses in the world, but don't don't. If you've got a problem, don't come to the table with a problem unless you've got a solution. If we understand if there are variables, but don't make excuses. You know, so dad's like, well, did you have a good time? Great, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, how much money, you know, how much money did you make? <laughs> you know, 
Do you have to go, come back and pack boxes in the in the warehouse in fucking 35 degrees heat? <laughs> or do you still want to do this acting career? What are you paying off? What bills? Are you on top of your game? Are you responsible? Are you diligent? Are you all these things that make an honest businessman? Are you achieving these things and making your father proud because he was too? So this is my attitude. What about the way you're edited? I, um, obviously, you know, you, you still watch Survive Now. It was a little bit different back when you played, but now they edit, you know, you've got the villains, you've got all that. Like, were you happy with the way you got edited? And I, I have to admit, I think David Mason and the crew did a pretty good job. And I think probably because you guys had other careers outside of it, they, they didn't make anyone look bad. No, no, no. So I think, I think, you know, David Mason just, he didn't give a shit about us. He didn't really fucking care either. He's just playing us like a like the the talent. Um, they th- they were D grade celebrities. I mean, I, I didn't I don't know what label, but he just he it's not his business, and he and he didn't care. So my hat goes off to him. It's, he's not invested in our personalities, and nor we care about our payments are negotiated with our agents. So. Um, you know the, the the way the way we play the game and the way we were puppeted in the game. The game, what sells on television is drunk problems. It was a tough game. They 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 they, they didn't want to feed us and give us some celebrity cushions because then we're not going to have drama. But the way they played me, I thought was because all my business was off camera and my, you know, when I got in someone's ear, I didn't get in someone's ear on camera because on the 10 minute camera footage on the beach, the producer was going to tell that fucking person my strategy. So why am I going to put it on camera when I'm climbing up the mountain? Then it's everyone's going to be no when it's back on the beach then that's, you can't trust. I can't, you can't, that's not a, that's just stupid. But that's the game. Everyone wants everything on camera so the producers can 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 navigate the show. But I never put, I never spoke my strategy on camera because then I knew it's not shared with every other contestant on the beach when they do the 10 minute camera footage. Because that's what happened. And that's how they that's how they pissed everyone off and rubbed everyone's feathers. Because they found out all the bullshit from the contestants that were willing to air their dirty fucking laundry on the beach. <laughs> I've got to ask a question. David brought up in his interview at the beginning of when we started your season about a couple of people were a bit lippy with him. They were sort of questioning his decisions a little bit too much. Uh, were you one of those ones, Justin? Or who can you tell us? Can you give us a gossip? Who were the ones who stood up to David a little bit maybe and kind of questioned a lot of what he was saying out there? You know, I only got pissed off with David because, um, and I don't really, you know, um, when I went into the finals and I'm not sure if you're going to bring this up later if you want to scrap on it. Go for it. We're um, there. In, in, bring it up. In, Imogen, I won it. I won the challenge. So I took Guy Leach into the finals. David, that pissed David off. So he came and threatened me off camera. What am I up to? Now, the, if there's already been rumours of me negotiating two weeks before, you probably assuming I've got another good negotiation going on with Guy. <laughs> None of his fucking business. But anyway, he's more or less said, you are stupid. I'm withdrawn, tired, hungry, had enough, and he's come and laid it on me. How dare, what are you up to? Taking this is off camera. What are you up to? Taking why are you taking the world Ironman champion into the finals with who's got all the guy votes? 
your why? Why? He thought I was mad taking Imogen because if I took Imogen, he assumed I would have won the game. He assumed, like, why are you taking Imogen? He threatened me, Channel 7 lawsuit. He was going to threaten me with some Channel 7 fucking thing that I took Guy. He thought I was up to. So I walked away from him off camera, and I just, it wasn't on camera, but I walked away and I'm going, how am I going to fucking deal with this? Like, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is pretty, this is not needed. You know what I mean? I mean, you yeah. don't come and, you don't come and, I want to say threat, I don't know if it was a threat or it was a warning, but it was a like, it, it, you, you can see him doing that. Like, what are you up to? I've won and I'm taking Guy Leach, who's got all the votes, who's a World Ironman champion, who's going to win the next challenge. Why am I taking him? Why can't I take Imogen? Which even is disrespectful to Imogen because she's played the game all along. She deserves to be there. She's got the women's votes. She's got everything going. She's smart, intelligent. She's ambitious. She's lasted. Give her the same respect, David. Like whether I take Guy or Imogen, to me, I still see both being a threat. But the only reason is I said to Guy from, from when we were out on having our vanilla slice, Lamington, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> when we were out having, having our little fucking doies, we said, let's go through, let's, let's fucking take care of this shit. Let's, let's clean up this place. And, and whoever... Whoever lasts, just guy shook. We shook each other's hand. We said, "I've got your back. If you go, you. If I don't get into the final, I'll take you into. I'll vote. I'll get you in the final." I said, "A guy. No matter what, both of us have to be in the final." And you know what? It meant more to guy because he's got an Iron Man. He's got a health product. He's got a nutrition. He's got a a, a, a personal training service. It was more for him to be the survivor champion, but it was more for me to honor Guy with that respect. We shook hands. We said, whoever, let's get, let's both go to the finals. Bottom line, Imogen did not play a role. As much, David couldn't work that out, but Imogen deserved to be there. And, 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 here you go. And, and clearly, David Mason, he, he wanted, he didn't want both of you in the final two, I'd imagine, because no. you had both been voted out. Correct. What an arsehole. Which how, did you, how did you then, you said like you stepped away and kind of thought, well, what do I do here? What did you do? How did you approach that? What did you say to David at that point? Great question. I had like 15 seconds to fucking think about this. I was, I was tired, I was exhausted, and I've gone, and I've walked over by the tree. I think, I've, I've just, I've gone. David, can I have a word? You want a grand final. You want you want ratings. You want ratings? Look at me, the underdog. What? Imagine the ratings taking on the world Iron Man champion in the finals of Survivor. The underdog. Take it on, big, you know, take it on the big guy. The guy is gonna win. Take a imagine that for ratings. And David went. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, <laughs> and, I, and I've gone, fuck it, hey, see ya. And I walked back to the drive. And because he was going to sue me for taking on Imogen. Wow. He, he, he's going to find Channel 7 and lay some, he thought I was up and, to something. And look, at, at the end of the day, you almost beat Guy. I mean, it was only one vote. One vote, yeah. Which it's, it's really, we kind of went on the notion when we discussed the episode that, you were kind of damned either way because the way it looked, Imogen would have gotten the votes as well. So, like, to, to us, Correct. at least on paper, I mean, it looked like you might not have been able to win no matter who you talk. I mean, David wasn't – I couldn't believe – and I couldn't believe David wasn't giving Imogen the amount of respect and thought 
and 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 honor and courtesy that she deserved. Yeah. Like, why was it a big deal? Why was it a bigger deal that I was taking that I was going to choose Guy and not Imogen? What was so wrong with Imogen? Hmm. I mean, she deserved a lot more respect. Hundred percent. We we we're the biggest fans of Imogen. I think yeah. Queen Imogen. We should well, be mentioning. She's Queen, a Hall Queen of Famer. She's a Hall of Famer. Well, absolutely. I she's mean, um. Incredible. There you go. But but this is off camera, guys. Yeah. I mean, this is the bullshit. I I had a, a, a deal with after after the um, try after the, 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 the after the we went to the the, the buffet. The, yeah. This is this is the kind of mind games that the network were putting in my head. I won't say the network, that production. Talk, talking about mind games, Justin, while we're on it, we're, we're, we're sort of at that, that point there where, where you had to make the decision who you're going to take. But that all came about because you won that last challenge. Now, Guy Leach, he was not happy when Dicko called him out for lifting his leg and, and was basically out, well, told him he was out of that challenge. And Dick, Dicko wasn't happy. He, he called bullshit. He actually said, I call bullshit, Dicko. We've, we've seen the footage. We've got a photo of it. He did lift the leg. So he, Dicko was right. But you right. must have been sitting there laughing to yourself at the end there when you, here, here you're battling it out for the your final spot at the end. And, and then and Guy Leach. never won a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Never. And you win the best one. <laughs> and I win the best one at the end of the goddamn show. I think it's brilliant. I was like... <laughs> Guy was I pissed. Believe, I can't believe this higher lord over me has just got my back. I was like, <laughs> this is great. I mean, the one I needed to win, the one that I had to win, the one that, that played a vital importance in the game was the last challenge for me. And, and I got over the line. How long do you reckon you could have lasted if they just stayed with the, the three points of contact on it? Cause it, it, it sort of ended pretty quickly after oh. it was down to the two, but well, do you, could you have stayed a lot longer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a guy and I, I'm mentally strong and guys would, he was physically a lot fitter than me. And, um, that my 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 mind because because we would we were talking smack to each other when when we're doing the pail of water yes right yeah. and I slipped and that's what it fell on me but I had a lot more in me on my shoulder and but we guy and I we were bonded so we would have talked smack to each other and just edge each other either way but remember this it was just a game because we'd already shook hands and said, no matter what, yeah. we're taking each other into the final. So Imogen didn't, it, it, Imogen was not there in our yeah. minds. Who now, do you reckon, who do you reckon Imogen would have taken if she had won? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> um, she would have looked at the numbers and I think she would have taken me because Guy would have had the votes. Just like the recent Survivor, the girl yeah, with, with Haley, Haley. Haley, she took the other, she took the weakest yes. one with the boats in. Yeah. Because that's what you've got to think about. Yeah, of course. Who's going to get those votes, right? Who's going to get the numbers? So I think, I think Imogen, Imogen knew Guy would have had Elton's vote, David's vote, Gabriel's vote. Um, Cause she landed on the island with the boys and Imogen, Imogen knew that she, taking on, yeah, taking on Guy, she wouldn't have won. She, if she was playing the game, I assume she would have taken on me. Not for any other reason, but for the numbers. Because she would have won the vote with the two, with, with the girls. Yeah, we were trying to sort of calculate how that would go I through. Pissed, I already pissed Gabby off, remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No Nicole's of course going to vote for right? Imogen. So, so yeah. no one knew about that. But, yeah. that. but Imogen knows. Yeah. So Gabby would have voted for Im Imogen, right? Nicole 100% would vote Nicole. for Imogen. So I, 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 I just think it would, would have been smart for, for – Imogen could have won if she took – if she chose me into the final. Did you go into that final tribal thinking you could win? 
I didn't give a fine shit. You know why? <laughs> it was the last episode that I was getting paid. There was no more television after that. Wow. <laughs> so I had made my fee. I had now paid that mortgage off. So I didn't, if I wasn't in another episode, there was no more money. There was no more money to be made. There was no more income. Might be the only time we ever get that answer, Matt. That the runner-up doesn't give a shit if he wins. I was, I was already getting <laughs> airtime. I didn't need You're to honest, survive yeah. on my resume. That doesn't make me a better person or help my business or anything. Survivor is just a tick on the list of something you do in life well, off your bucket list. You know, it's funny, Ben. I've, I've obviously I'm a massive fan of of, of Survivor, and and the title to me would be would be awesome. You know, to ha to have that title of Soul Survivor. But I I made it clear too. At the end of the day, you know, the money at the end of the day is the most important thing. You you can't money. You can do so much more with it than the title. It's so and it's so interesting you say that, Matt. Sorry to jump yeah. in because like, like absolutely, I'm never going to say no to five hundred thousand dollars today. But in all honesty, as much as I would love half a million dollars. If I won Survivor, I think the fact that I could sit here and say that I'm the winner of Survivor would personally probably mean more to me because it's just a weird, like, I get exactly what you're both saying. And again, I'm not saying no to half a million dollars, but I just, I don't know. Like, I've got that weird mindset that I've followed this show for so long. It's like if, it's Justin, back on the Olympics thing, like, if I somehow found ability to make an Olympics, I wouldn't give a shit about winning a medal. Of course, I'd love to win a medal. But if I just made an Olympic team, that would be enough for me. I'm an Olympian. Yeah, so yeah. It's, 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 yeah. it's kind of I weird on that mean. level. Look, yeah. look, Ben, if, 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 I was, if I was thrown in, in Alaska and I had to climb and ski a certain mountain and, and I became um, the winner of the extreme games skiing and then because my skiing life and the kids and the kids – for 15 years, I've been helping kids with Down syndrome ski in Lake Tahoe, the Special Olympic Kids, which Arnold Schwarzenegger founded in 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 um, in in, uh, uh, in Nevada. If I go, if I did something that that gave me that extra uh, sugar on my career, that I could go and share that with these kids and that skiing and look, you know. If Justin survived in Alaska, you can do that too. If it was some kind of motivational help for me to share and communicate and 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 respond and teach and give um, to those to those kids, that would work for me. But I don't know. For me, I don't think the survivor it had. If anything, some of my mates were like, "The fuck you want to do that for?" <laughs> you know, like, yeah. what, what do you want to do that to yourself? I mean, that's <laughs> that was the bullshit I was copying. I'll, I'll say this, Ben. I love his honesty. I mean, yeah, you, know, me you, could come, you, you could come on here and say, you know, because obviously you know that it's going to be Survivor fans listening and, you know, you can say, oh, no, you, you're honest. And, and, and that's what I love about you, Justin. Like, you know what? You've been honest this whole time. You said, you know, you were there to make the money. You, you, looked, at, you, you looked at it as a business. Um, each episode was money, and at the end of the day, once it got to the end and you couldn't go any further or make any money, it didn't really matter what happened after that. You you had done what you set out to do, which was get the most money you could. Correct, correct. And that 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 money that that money. Let let me let me just. It's it wasn't the money. It was the mortgage. It was the yes. responsibilities. It, it was things that my father. Um, and, and, and people around me respect it. It's not money for me to, to, to go to, you know, Spain and, and Mykonos and go on a holiday. That's not the money I'm talking about. It was money to take care of, of responsibilities and more, it's something to investment, things in your career, things that give you stability, things that give you growth, things that allow you to give back. Um, it's that money. It's that money. That, that, that I was thinking all the time. Now, in the game, you know, obviously it's all about getting to the end, but there were some really fantastic rewards we saw. Uh, that's one thing I love about this season. 
you know, the rewards that some of the players got to go on were, were incredible. We, we, you mentioned, you touched on it earlier with Imogen, got to go see the, the rope vine jumping and all yeah. that. Now, at the end, you guys got to go to Mount Yasser, go up on the mountain and see that. Now, how incredible was that? Well, you don't take a thrill seeker and pop him on the top of the volcano <laughs> and expect him to look <laughs> I climbed down. I climbed down that fucking thing, and I swear to God, I'll just show you. This is what was happening, right? If I open these lemons, <laughs> where I was climbing down, right, the volcano's in front of me, right. I climbed down where the lava was. I was ten feet from the lava. In Venuato, there's not exactly a liability insurance, yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> so I was right next. Right next to the lava, and he's boom. And I swear to God, I was like, lava's gone over my head. I was like, I'm a bit too close. So all of a sudden, I've gone, Justin, time to go. So, and then when I'm climbing back, I saw these big chunks just, just landing. I was like, this was really stupid. And I'm turning around, running back up the hill, and it exploded in front of me. And I was just like, I'm not going to see the rest of this fucking Survivor game now. You're not going to get your money in the end. Nicole will end up getting your paycheck. <laughs> I'm going to be some molten stew. You know, it's going to well. be... I would have it's going to be Channel 7 Sunrise, Koshy the next morning. Home and away actor Justin Mel be killed filming Survivor <laughs> with a volcano. came. It's killed sightseeing on the volcano in, in Vanuatu. Oh, what was he doing there? It was playing Survivor. <laughs> but was, was that the one thing, like, you know, you, you loved about the game? Like, obviously, you know, outside of making the money, like, I mean, that's pretty cool to be able to, well, you're getting paid to go and, and do something like that. I mean, it's, it must be a pretty awesome experience. Yes, but we didn't know. Yeah. We, we I had no idea. I, I know, I, you know, I moved... I moved to America when I was 16, training in steamboat with the US Olympic team. All I know is America. Mm. I traveled Europe, skiing, but I didn't see much of Europe. I got up at 5 a.m., trained all day, got home, video analysis with your coaches. You go to bed, you get up at 5, stretch out on the mountain. Even when I acted and worked in different locations, I'm learning lines at night. I'm not sightseeing. So I had no idea about Vanuatu. I had no idea about that, the South Pacific Islands and everything. I knew they're beautiful. I knew photos, and but I, I, I did not, I did not get chance to. I'm going in there for survival. I didn't think I was going to go on a sightseeing trip. So that was, it was pretty amazing that I was happy just to go for a ride on a helicopter. To be honest with you. <laughs> Right, but you know, to take me to a, a volcano, I, you know, I was a bit guys. You're mad taking me to a volcano and think I'm going to sit and watch it from the from the furthest distance. I'm climbing down that shit. I want to get right up amongst it, and that's 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 why I get butterflies when you throw me on locations or places that things could go wrong. I'm. I'm, I'm like, I always push the envelope. I'm always, yeah, maybe we'll just climb up this ledge. I'm, I'm that guy. You know what I mean? And now I think about it, though. David Mason was probably hoping you did get hit by a bit of the lava because then he could have said, fuck, get rid of Justin, get, a, get uh, Imogen in the final two now. Exactly. I mean, the only <laughs> thing I didn't do was get all these fucking kitchen plates and take it with the helicopters <laughs> and throw it in the volcano. <laughs> So you did break his pot. I should have. <laughs> uh, Which later that night, I the, the real broken it over his head. <laughs> <laughs> the real, the real thrill-seeking part that night, though, after the volcano, you got to have dinner with Dicko. Do you yes. remember that night? How was it yeah. sitting around breaking bread with <laughs> Dicko? Be yeah. Before we go, before we say, I swear, I swear, when you guys turned up, he was already a few wines deep. <laughs> he looked. He looked, can I just say, the way he, do, he looked, he was very glassy-eyed. Dicko, got, see, I played golf with Dicko at the Jack Newton Classic, right? And, and, and so I still see Dick, Dick, Dicko every year and we always have a laugh. And he's always got a lot of time for me. And, you know, he's always got a smile. Oh, yes, I just, we had this like bond because we did, you know, we're over there together. And, um, and 
you know, he he's when we showed up to to the dinner table, um, to me it was just all a it was it it, it was an act, not Dicko. I'm saying it was just this was part of the show. Yeah. So you know, have some dinner, talk talk about the show, you know. Um, but we're doing it. We're just breaking bread. That's but it's about the show. So I didn't really, you know, it looked like you. I I I probably would have read into it having a glass of wine or or drinking water because I, I wouldn't. He looked. We're so exhausted, you know. We're just read. We when when you've been down the island and someone gives you a nice dinner and everything, we just I'm I'm just like. I want to eat all the bread. I'm just trying. You know what I'm working on? I'm working on my table manners, to be honest with you. Because I, because I didn't need a knife and fork. I would have just been going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yep. I'm just trying to work on have I been brought up right? Not <laughs> make sure you cut the bread. I just want to break the bread and swallow it all in my mouth. Like I, I, <laughs> just, uh, your table manners. You're on television. Don't be a greedy little pig. I mean, this this is what I'm going through. Wow, wow. <laughs> i got to ask, just on the final tribal, when it does get down to that final vote, you've got to, guys got to, I know you've said at that point you don't give a shit, but like surely at that moment you're thinking, fuck, I could win this, what the hell? What do you mean? When so, so the, the, it comes down, obviously, guy wins by a vote. So when Dicko's about to read that final vote. Oh. So when he's literally saying, you've both got two, he's saying the winner of Celebrity Survivor is, and it's either it's you or Guy, and he flips no, like no, at, at that point where you're thinking, shit, I could win this. No, I, I knew Guy. I knew Guy would win. When I picked Guy, just to recap, I picked Guy, not Imogen, to the finals because Guy and I shook hands and said, we've got a mission to do, no matter what, just have each other's back and let's get into the finals. Yeah. It meant more, it meant a lot to him because of his, his brand as Guy Leach and Survivor. And I'm a Bondi boy, he's a manly boy. We know all the same people. And his wife, Helen's a good friend of mine, we grew up in Chadwick's in the modeling agency together. We knew. I'm not going to screw this guy over. He's, we all have good friends, same friends. I'm not going to go back on his word. I mean, this was just a man's... The only thing that's left in this show is I can't just... That's all you've got is a handshake. So you legitimately, at that, even at that point, with one vote left, no, knew that guy had won... I knew, Gabby, it, I knew Gabby was upset with me because of the... So you oh, knew you had no vote. chance, right. Yeah. Right? And I knew Guy had the male votes. So I knew Guy was going to win. Wow. I already knew that. But I didn't go on the show into the finals to win. I went in there to respect Guy and, and honour my word to bring him into the finals. Even if it cost me the show, it, it didn't cost me my respect and my integrity. What would have you done, though, Justin, like if hypothetically Gabby all of a sudden decided to vote for you and, and Dicko read your name out. Like, what have you just gone, holy fuck, like, oh, what Gabby the fuck is Gabby? <laughs> Gabby was pissed off at me. But, but, but what would I have done? I don't know. I had, I had delivered Guy. In, I had already delivered what I said I would do. So Guy was in the finals on his own merit. You know what I mean? So whether yeah. I won or Guy won, there was no animosity between me and Guy. Now we're both there. We had a game plan. Eliminate Nicole, eliminate Imogen, eliminate David. Who will go first? Well, let's focus on David. Because David's, David was easy. And David, David, to his demise, he thought Nicole and Imogen were stupid. Well, that's just wrong right there. He thought they, how stupid and that, how ignorant, how, I don't know, whatever. He, he just thought Nicole and Imogen, um, it was the most obscene, stupid thing they could do was, you know, to vote David. He, he couldn't believe it. I mean, he thought they, they I, I, I just think it's, um, 
Imogen and Nicole are smart young women who had their own strategy. I mean, just because he was at, he was the result of their strategy, that, that gives you no right to say you're stupid for doing that. I mean, that's their given right. That's Imogen and Nicole's given right to say, right, I've listened to Guy and Justin and I've listened to David. I don't trust David, so I'm going to vote him out. That's their game plan. It's a Justin... Oh, sorry, you go, Ben. I was just no, gonna... no, Matt, please. I, I insist you may take the next question. No, I was just going to say, so obviously you're a numbers man with the money. Now, from our understanding, Guy won an extra 100000 for being the winner. Yes. So I'm guessing that would have been the same for you. So like, if one vote would have been different, you would have ended up getting an extra 100000 on top of that. Yeah, but I'd already won. I've already earned a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. I'd already won. I already got paid eighty nine thousand dollars to start the show. Another fifteen twenty on the show. Cover that by ten x. Cover my beginning money. I already, I already won the show financially. Yeah. Was there any so that hundred grand was just sugar for me. What What about the aspect though of that extra money that would have gone to your charity? Well, that's a different question. But I, I Dancing with the Stars and all these other shows. I'm the ambassador for diabetes uh, for the Danny Foundation. And, um, and I've lost my brother to diabetes. He had a heart, he had daddy bed syndrome and died in the apartment next door 25 years, years ago. So, um, and there's a history of diabetes and the other siblings in my family. So I'm, I've, I've been supporting diabetes and travel to McKay, to I travel around Australia and help some of the communities who are struggling with type one di diabetics. So that would have been huge for me to be able to contribute that. Um, but I'd already, but it wasn't as, um, I'd already, I, you know, that would have been wonderful, but I don't think I could, I don't think I could have controlled that. That, that would have been amazing. Amazing if I would have won that money for my charity. Do, do you know, because obviously everybody who got voted out, $5,000 to their charity. Yep. Did, did you get extra to give to them as the runner-up? Or like, how did that work? Like you got voted out, so did they no, get 5000 and then they get more because you got runner-up? No, I, I just got 5000 for just my charity. Just the five? Which is fascinating to think because, I mean, obviously – you know, it's billed as what a hundred thousand for the for the winners to their charity, which is great. But like, I I would have assumed that they would I, have been like a fifty thousand if you. I agree with you, Ben. I thought that was a a flaw in the production. Yeah. I think I think I think you should have the op the opportunity, um, just like Celebrity Apprentice, when things get bigger and better, um, you get more money for your charity as you earn those stripes yeah. i just i just and more responsibility i think if you're in the show longer in survivor and you had earned that was you had earned that um that 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 maintaining that staying power in the show i think they should then there were the winner 50 second 30 third 20 i i think that would be a good way to share they're, they're probably they're probably planning to do that, and then they realise your fee was like half the budget of the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault, Justin. <laughs> that's that's why a lot of the challenges, you know, you couldn't, you know, they, they like they they rationed a few of the challenges. <laughs> they were running out of they were uh, running out of money and everything. Which I have to ask that the 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 rap party then it's it's yeah. all done and dusted. Guy wins. Yeah. What's what's the rap party like after? Do you finally get a chance to get on the get on the wines with Dicko and and kind of go up to David Oldfield and have a few words with him I, afterwards? <laughs> I was I was shattered. I needed a good night's sleep. I think I just ate and went to bed. But I do remember this um, because the last night we were flying home the next day. So. When I went back to the hotel, I hadn't been back to the hotel room since the week or two before. So that night after the grand final, emotionally 
and your energy is like, ah, it's like you're up and down, you're up and down. So it's like when, when, when you're on a TV set, especially when I'm doing Days of Lives of General Hospital, you're on these big multi-million dollar sets and you run down, you learn your lines, then you go and perform. And then they take an engineering break for five minutes and then you relax, and then you gotta be up, and then you gotta relax, and then you gotta be up. You gotta, it's like this yo-yo of emotion. At that end of that night, that final night, when I got back to the hotel room, I was exhausted. I needed a good freaking shower. I just love a beer and I like a good night's sleep. And in saying that, when I went to bed, I woke up in, at 2 a.m. In the night, I got up, I like to show, I got up, I walked <laughs> over, and I went to the cupboard. I went to the bathroom in the cupboard. <laughs> I thought it was the tree around the back of the house on the island. Because we, we, have, we have a pathway that you would trip over from our tent, or not tent, whatever that banana leaves. So that at, in the middle of the night, when you had to go to the bathroom and you stop spooning your other contestant, when you get up and then you, 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 there's this, after a few weeks, there's this way you just get up and it's like you're sleepwalking, mm. right? And you get up, you walk around this way. You know you're not going to trip over the vines or the banana leaves or the rock or, or the fireplace. There's this little path and then you go to the bathroom behind the tree in the middle of the night and then you come back. And then you go back to sleep and you go back to spooning Gabriel or Kim or whoever you're spooning, right? And then, but then when I, in the hotel room, I got up at 2 a.m., I walked around the bed, opened up the cupboard, and I went to the bathroom in the hotel cupboard. <laughs> I didn't get charged for that the next morning. <laughs> I was awake. I was sleepwalking. And I went, oh, my God, what have I done? And I've gone, okay, this, this is... This is not right, Justin. <laughs> this is ground control, we have a problem, right? I thought, um, you better clean this up and go to the bathroom in the hotel, the hotel, <laughs> which you haven't been used to for the last month. Go to the bathroom and then go to bed. It, was, it's, it played with my games. My mouth, my gums were sore. I'm tired. I'm sleepwalking. I just, honestly, um, it was a head fuck, the whole thing. Then I, I thought Justin was going to admit to him being the one that took the big turd in, in Dicko's toilet. I thought maybe he just wandered what in there. Was that guy, Leach? <laughs> we thought it was Amber. Like, is, no, is Amber, there more Amber. of this? Is there more, is there more than one green uh, turd that we need like to that know? Nothing come out of her bottom. No, no. Amber, <laughs> Amber admitted um, that it was her. Amber, Amber said I, it was her. I don't think Princess Mary will allow Amber to take that kind of thing. <laughs> no. I th- wow. I, 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 I think she's... She's had a bit of royal treatment not to do that. We, we mean, know yeah. now what to ask Guy Leach next week. Yeah, then, yeah. Like, kind of try think, to get to. I think Guy bottom. Leach is filled up with protein. I think he's there. <laughs> All those Uncle Toby's neutral well, grain. It, it had a bit of neutral grain in it, probably. So yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. I've got to, I've got to ask just a couple of our sort of standard ones that we kind of asked us in yep. terms of certain questions. I mean, you mentioned you stay in touch with some of the people you've, you know, Dicko, someone you see regularly, other people like that. I mean, who are some of the other ones you kept in touch with? Are someone like Gabby, who you were friends with? I mean, oh, I see, well, Gabby moved back to LA. I moved after, excuse me, after general, I went back to general hospital, the soap on ABC. Um, then Gabby was in LA, but then my, my mother, um, she got cancer. So, and my dad had cancer. So I sat down with my agent and my publicist and, um, and my manager in LA and said, um, can I get out of this show? I need to go home. My, my, my mum got breast cancer. My father had prostate cancer at the time. And, um, and I said, I, I, I need to be at home now. So I, I, I left America. So I, I didn't see Gabby again. And I moved back to Australia to look after mum and dad. My dad was sick. My dad just died a few, a few years ago. So I came back home to take dad to hospital and look after him and, and, um, and just be that guy. So I, 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 I gave my, I put my career 
on I, and, and, and the people connected to my career. I didn't get, unless they were in the firing, it were in the line of sight of what I had to do for my mum and dad, I didn't have enough time to reconnect. I think I spoke to Kim Johnson quite a few times when I went back to LA because um, we always caught up. Um, and if we saw Gab, I think Kim, well, I text Kim. After I saw your interview, I text Kim and we'll be texting each other again. Great. Um, Gab, I didn't see anyone. Guy Leach, I played golf. I see him at the Jack Newton. Um, prior to COVID, you know, we had a few games at Manly. We've done a few things. Um, guys, some guys' friends are my friends over in Manly. So uh, we update each other through our friends. You know, hey, you have friends. You go, oh, fuck. Have you seen Bob? Oh, he's doing well. And you, you find sometimes you feel like you're there with them, but you haven't seen them because you're friends. You all have mutual friends. So that's kind of been that. Uh, the rest I, 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 I would not see. But if I did see again, I saw Fiona or, or Elton or I'd shoot a beer with. I mean, right. Wayne Gardner, I did his heading on the island because we had a night. I said, Wayne, I said, Wayne, I've got a bit of a, I'm a bit of a fanboy. I love racing motors. I love motorcycles. I've got a Suzuki TLR race bike. And I've been watching you just, I can't believe, you know, I, I used to watch him win the Grand Prix, uh, and he, he goes, yeah, I'll take you out the track if you want. I went, are you serious? <laughs> he said, yeah, I'll, I'll teach you how to run the track. I said, unreal. So my publicist got the Sydney Morning House, and we all went out the track, and I've got a video I still do of me and well, So that was Gardner. after, I was going to ask you about that. That's on your website, so that was after yeah. Survivor, not yeah, before. All oh, right, okay, right. He No, that was after Survivor, Wayne said, and then... I think they want to do publicity and photos. Wayne said, I'll teach you how to go around the track. And, you know, when you, when you drive down that first straight at Eastern Creek, you, you're going 280 kilometres an hour. And the first left is about 180 kilometres an hour. And when you roll in, if you don't clutch right or down gear, have you ever seen those bikes where you come over the wheel, like the, yep. the wheel comes over? That's when you don't gear shift down right coming from 240 to 180 kilometers an hour. And he taught me how to roll and how to move on the bike doing, 100, you know, doing 260 kilometers an hour. And I wow. followed him around the track and then he followed me to see what I was doing wrong. I got the friend of mine to video it. So, so I always had his corrections and constructive criticism and all his education on riding the bike. I've got that on video. So, I've always, I always look at, because at those speeds, when things go wrong, they go very wrong. So I've always, I videoed his, his instructions to me that day um, so I could look at it in, in, in the future. And I remember him going down the straight and he popped up one wheel and overtook me around the first left-hand corner at 180 kilometers an hour. <laughs> he threw his wheel up and I thought, the guy's a king. So, you know, those kind of things through friendships on the island, like when, when um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big kid at heart and, and I, I don't, you know, my career and what I've achieved, um, it doesn't feed into my ego and to my life. You know, I'm like, um, if you're great at something and I can learn from you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to punish you with questions and learn and, 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 and find out what makes you tick and how you got there and how did you do that to win? You know, I, I want to win with you. And, um, and for, for, for kids I train with skiing, you know, they don't want to know where they went wrong. They, they, they just want to know how they can improve, what they did right and what they could do better. And I think that kind of, when, I, when, it, when those, that kind of talent is on the island, and I'm learning something, um, it's an opportunity for me. And I think kind of that's the way I was engaging my friendships. And unfortunately, I, I would have loved to extend a couple, couple of friendships, but my priority was my mother and father at the time. And that's kind of where I've been since my career was taking care of my investments and making sure my time is spent not traveling around the world and islands, but being close to my mum and dad, look, looking after my autistic sister. Justin, did you 
keep anything from the show? Like your your bandanas and stuff? Did you? I fucking wish. I don't know. I tried to bring the machete home, but they took it off me. <laughs> At the airport. What, a customs? I, or like, I was going to say. Just, you can't take this. And, oh, I that's don't take this. I was Jason, Jason and his back. I was going to do a horror film. I wanted that machete. Just go home and start chopping things up, chopping the. I'm going to chop up my lemons with a survivor machete. Actually, actually, I know you said earlier, right at the start of this interview, when you were doing shows in America, and you had to sort of put your ego to a side. But yep. when you when you came back from Vanuatu, you'd just been getting called the Fire God this whole time. Did that? Did you get a bit of an ego there? I didn't know I was called the Fire God till after I heard. <laughs> <laughs> See, there was a whole strategy to that. If you want to know, there's it rained, right? Now, in my backyard, I've got a fire pit. I love fires. I haven't had much summer in my life. I marshmallows, fire, winter. That's all I'm about, right? A nice hot toddy with a marshmallow in the ski chalet at 14,000 feet. You can't, it's the best. So making fire and making it the way like an Indian fire and the way you do it is really critical. Now, if you've got a lot of cold people and it's raining, well, and you're making fire, they're not going to get rid of you. And I know they couldn't do the fire that well because I was using the lava rocks from the Benoit There's 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 this a bit of a ge- geology, uh, you know, like a geology kind of, little criteria here is the rocks from the volcano that was spread around you can um they hold warmth and fire now in in the ski mountains when they clear the roads in europe and america they pour lava on the snow rocks to get grit for the tires going up the highway and the rocks melt the snow for them so they don't have to clear it because these rocks they, when the sun hits these rocks, they warm up very hot, they melt the snow, clears the road, the highway gets open to go up to the ski passes. So in using that knowledge, I use the rock on the island, I put it over the fire, after I made the husk and got the wood and hit, hit the fire, it rained. So instead of not having been able to start the fire in the morning, I put all the banana leaves over the volcanic rock which kept it warm and insulated. And I was always able to keep fire and keep warm and start a new fire in the morning, no matter what the conditions were, because I managed to make a proper, like a snow mountain using the lava rock, I managed to insulate the heat. So we always had hot food, always had a hot fire. I kept everyone warm. And that was just a no brainer because this is what I do in life. Wow. And then, and then there are moments then when you've got, you decide to have a sleep in one morning, David Oldfield's wanting you to get up and cook. And then also when you're starting to make, was it Island Porridge without, um, without David, you were taken over as well. He was getting a bit pissed off a few times oh. as you're doing that. <laughs> you know, I was getting a little bit, you know, his, his swagger was getting on my nerves a bit. Let's just say. So you I need just, to punch something, Justin. You need to punch it to bring up the memories. <laughs> I'm going to go and kick the shit out of Black Belt Bob over there. In the <laughs> Do you, do you still play the guitar, Justin? Do I? Yeah. No, I, I've, um, I tried my hand at it. Um, I, I played on the guitar in, 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 in America because, um, it's, it's what we, it's, my friends did it. I mean, there's, there's a place called Guitar Center down the road on Sunset Boulevard there. It's, it's as big as Ikea. This is about 300,000 guitars there. And, um, and I, I always wanted to learn a musical instrument. I don't think, but unfortunately I went to an all boys, I went to a rugby school and grew up surf life saving. I didn't appreciate music when I was younger. So it wasn't until after I left school, I appreciated music. A lot of my friends in America were, were writers and musicians and they did the music score to films. And, you know, I just think um, we used to get like a little four, four, four track and, you know, put a little tape cassette in there, lay down a tune, have a little of this, and then all of a sudden you think you're James, you're James Morrison. 
right? <laughs> and then and then you wake up, wake up in the morning, and you play back that tape, and you go, oh, that was. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> not not you know, quite I James just, Morrison. Yeah. Not, 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 not quite I, I was, there. I was hoping you were gonna say, Yeah, I play it all the time and you're gonna you're gonna lead us out on a on a little Ah. <laughs> uh, not I, quite there. One thing, I've got I've got a couple couple of quick fire questions I want to ask in terms of we love the what ifs. All right. Yep. Now let let's play the what if game of you didn't come back into the game or you got voted out. You're on the jury, all right. I wanna give you situations of final two. Who would you vote for, right? If it's Imogen and Guy and you're on the jury, who are you voting for? Guy. Guy, Imogen and Nicole. Imogen. Guy or Nicole? Guy. David or Guy? Guy. David or Imogen? Imogen. David or Nicole? <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Poor David's not getting any love there at all. <laughs> so, who, who does David have to be sitting next to to get your vote? Uh, ben? <laughs> yeah, I was about, I bet for Ben. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. Matt, Ben finally gets a, gets a vote. Uh, one thing, too, I wanted to quickly ask you about. Now, um, justinmelvey.com doesn't look like it's been updated in a while, Just, but I just wanted to quickly ask you about this. I wonder yes. if it's still a possibility here. Your fan club. Now, um, for $20, this yes. is the Justin Melby fan club. I could get the Justin's official biography, a personally autographed 8 by, autographed 8 by 10 photo, personalised birthday and holiday greeting, and various newsletters and updates during the year, and much, much more. Did, did this go off? Like, were you kind of beating off people at the stick for the Justin Melby fan club, and do people still want to join it? Yes. Would you like to know the insight to that? I, of course I would. Okay. So this is the way a fan club works. In America, a lot of daytime stars and primetime, they have a fan club. And they have someone who operates the fan club. Right. And she's usually a lovely, just a, just a great person that's good at admin. And she's from the deep south and she's, she loves the arts and movies and TV. And all – and – Bold and Beautiful, Days of Lives, General Hospital, they have a lot of fan clubs because when you have big fan clubs, this was our form of what people call social media or likes today, okay? So as a business in America, pretend fan clubs were Instagram, but we never had Instagram then. We had fan clubs. So if someone joins, so you have a lady that runs a fan club and she usually has six or seven other great talent on daytime soap. And these fan clubs always go to bat for you. you know, when, when you want to go to Deep South, to Paducah, Kentucky, Louisiana, I hosted the, the Tennessee Country Music Awards. You, you, they fly everywhere, the fan clubs show up, they pay you a shitload of money to show up and they want autographs. And Middle America, the Bible Belt of America and the Deep South are all our fan base. We're too busy in Australia for that shit. You know, we've got, we've got too much going on. But down in the deep south, mm, 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 that's, you are come back now, yeah. That's just a whole other level of fans, right? So when we, when you, when you, when they go on your website and they, and you join, then an email goes to my fan club lady who looks after like Bo and Hope and Marlene and all these other characters on my shows. And they pay $25. Now, if I've got 100 fans paying $30, you work out the maps, right? Yeah. Then if I make it 3,000 here, and then I get another 100 fans, I make another So over a year, if I get four or 500 fans or, or whatever, and I'm making, and the lady, she gets the fan mail, I get to read it, I also filter it, I also understand that, like, Ali, who was on Days of Our Lives, um, uh, sh you know, some of the female soap stars in America get fan mail from prisons, right? And it's yep. pretty serious, right? But it yep. is, that's, that's America. So some of the fan, I always make sure I read the, the fan mail and make sure, you know, we always filter it to know what kind of fans they are. But... We always have, we do a photo shoot where we just have an original photo, but it's a business. So we pay this lady 15 or 20%. She, of the 
of the commission of the year or the fan club. So if you're making 10,000, you pay her 2,000 to run it, you're making 8,000, right? Just a simple maps. So a lot of the fan clubs, we get to read them out, but all those little extra things, when we have a photographer on set or publicity, we get photos that we don't, that you wouldn't put up on the internet. There's no Instagram then, right, or Facebook. So these were like fans just wanted to know you. It's middle America. There's 218 million people, 160 million viewers watch my show a week. They just want to know you. They, their husbands, the, these, the mums, their husbands, they're in Iraq and they go to war. And the only thing they've got is to live this fantasy life on these shows. So if they can get close to understanding your character or fan club, that's why it's so big. So those, those kind of things at the back end of the websites and things like fan clubs, in Australia, probably we wouldn't like think it's a bit ri ridiculous because who, who does that, you know? But in America, it's big business. It's fascinating it's to hear that. Make, it's really interesting because I, I look... I randomly remember watching Days of Our Lives when you were sick from school, right? Yeah. You'd flick it on and, oh, Bo's still there. There he is going along. Oh, who's possessed this week? But it's, I yeah. mean, it, it, make, it makes sense. And it's just, it's interesting because it's got such a fan base, like Days of Our Lives, doesn't it? Like, it's, yeah. I'm sure you probably still get recognised or, or do you still get, like, co people contacting you because of this? I mean, you were on it nearly 20 I, years I, ago. I, I love being, like, there was a time in Australia where, my profile, when you're on a lot of covers, magazines and TV week and Cleo and, and, and you're doing, and you're winning logies and you win, you know, unfortunately in, a, in Australia, that tall poppy syndrome, they're just waiting for you to fuck up and they just want a tragedy. They just want, they want something. And I knew when I got really big here, I just, I had the opportunity to get out of town and get to America to that profile calms down. Because the only way your profile calms down is if, you know, you get caught doing something that's not respected in today's values or current society. You know, everyone wants, everyone, everyone, we don't like people that think or want to do too well here. You know, we, we don't cater for that. You know, we, we, we want to, we don't want perfect in Australia. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate, but I'm just giving you the reality. In America, they want perfect. They want, they want to give it a go. Yeah, let's go there. Let's go look like you look perfect for this. You look great. You know, if you're a handsome actor in Australia, they think you're a dumb model. If you're a handsome actor in America, they call you a leading man. It's a different mentality. You're allowed to have brains and be a handsome actor in America. But in Australia, you're not allowed to have brains. You're not even allowed to act. You're wow. not even allowed to have talent. Fascinating. We're going to it's ask us on the fan that's, mail that's thing. That's what it. was the weirdest? What was the weirdest fan request or mail you ever got? Um, look, on home and away. Um, I, I, oh, look, so on, I think on when I did the cover of Claire, I think I, 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 <laughs> I, I wrote something like you know I like. I take the piss out of myself some of these questions. <laughs> I think I said I like green frogs, and, and forty-five green frogs showed up to tell Salmon because they read it in a magazine, right? I mean, I was just taking the piss out of myself, and and all of a sudden someone said all these green binny binny babies or something green. I, wow! You know, because when when the journalists ask you questions, I'm like, Are you serious? Uh, I just sometimes make stupid. Stupid <laughs> comments. <laughs> anyway, that shut up. And 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 a not so funny time was when um, mum and dad never really caught into my career on television. Nor did they really give a shit. They watched the ABC anyway. They didn't watch Channel Seven. So you know, as long as I was happy, I was making a living. And I was a good kid. That was it. But um, I think a girl who was not not or I have an autistic sister, but. 
you know, a girl that was struggling mental health wise, um, I think she showed up uh, a bit similar to the case that's going on with um, um, Wally Wilson's son with, with um, Lincoln. Lincoln. I know Lincoln very well. Uh, he's, he's had a few bad moments with fans and a compo- obsessive fans. I, I had a couple back, back then. And anyway, mum let one of them into my house. Wow. And she claimed that, I don't know what she claimed, but mum let her in the front door and let her over. I was back from America, I was staying in my house, and all of a sudden I, I had this crazy fan in my bed. <laughs> what the fuck are you? Like, mum, I had to, I had to go to so mum, do you know, oh, she just showed up at my door. And, um, and I was like, you know, I was like, mum, you can't, I'm on television. You've got to be careful. Like these people, wow. these people, some of these people are just not well. So you just got to handle it very, very sensible. you got to be, I'm, I'm used to a lot of fan mail where, you know, the writing of the fan mail is like five-year-old writing, but this person says the age, hi, I'm, I'm 23 years old and I love you on the show and da, da, da. But their writing is like grade school. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you, you just got to be sensible and read into it and, and you got to do your best to give them everything the time of day within its work. But I work, I work, the lady that used to run my fan club, I mean, I'm not as involved any, 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 anymore, but, but the, but the lady I, I worked with was, was very mindful of who you're working with, but it's a business in America. And just like you've got to know me talking about the show, I treat, the fan club and everything else, I treat it as a business. If, if you made money while you slept, you would run a fan. a way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask advice, actually, Justin. I was thinking of maybe we should start up the Matt Dyson fan club to see if maybe there could well, be um, some things uh, for, for Matt. I mean, uh, he's got a big f- fan base out there of the Survivor fans. He's very highly regarded for his two seconds on the show. So, uh I don't know. Like maybe you could hook us up with your, your fan club uh, lady to start up the Matt Dyson fan club. Or they, or they could win like a shooting session at like a gun range or something. Like with Matt, ten <laughs> percent you know? off your next speeding fine. I, I would like, say so. Matt, uh, Matt, can you, can you teach me how how to shoot a gun like Dirty Harry and get a three fifty seven Magnum or you know what I mean, whatever. All I can say is, talking about crazy fans, if Ben ever turns up at your doorstep, don't let him in and certainly don't <laughs> let him in your bed. Oh, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm giving him a lemonade. Not a, hey. no, not a problem. Screw you, Matt. I'm not coming to your house. I'm going to Justin's. He's got a Logie, all right? Uh, you don't have a Logie. Can we see your Logie, Justin, for our video for our video audience? Be careful. If you shop at my house, you might not get out of here alive. <laughs> I keep you all night. Wow, I'm scared now. No, no Logie showing just for that. <laughs> I, I've got to, I've got to say, Justin, before before we let you go. Actually, hang on. Before we let you go, sorry, I've got one burning question. Yes. You, you twice in the show were shown wearing two different hats. You've got a Yankees hat and an LA Dodgers hat. Who are you? Who do you go for, the Yankees or the Dodgers? So, I go for the LA Dodgers. Okay. And I don't know how I got the Yankees hat. Right. Okay. But I love. I loved, I used to love baseball caps um, because, I don't know, everyone in, in LA, like everyone just had like cool baseball caps. Mm-hmm. And LA is quite, um, America's quite driven with, with, you know, the LA Lakers caps, LA Lakers shirts, Dodgers shirts, Phillies, um, Red Sox, Yankees caps. It's a statement. And, and, and it's, it's an, it's a, it's a cool, it's, 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 it's a great, I want to go cap there. Um, yeah, I, you know, this is my LA Dodgers. Oh, look at that. There you look go. At, oh, look at all the holes. Very worn. I've had this forever. And, 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 um, I, 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 I love sport and that kind of cap. And, and also if you have a bad hair day, you just wear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got the but. I'm gonna say I've got the. Uh, where is it over here? Here we go. Pull out, pull out the white socks. So get on the, you know, 
That's, I'm, I'm wearing it very well on my head for people watching this at home. But uh, Matt, Matt, have I ever asked you who your baseball team is? I think we discussed that at one point. Do you do you even have a team? At I, all? I've got no team. I'm not a not a baseball guy. Yeah. yeah he's still reeling that the Rabbitohs lost the grand final. Probably wouldn't meant to uh, mention that. It's are, been, you, it's been... are you a Bunnies fan? Are you Matt? I am. I am a big Bunnies fan. Absolutely. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm Roosters through and through. But yeah. Oh. That's yeah. a good rivalry. Big rivalries. Big rivalries. Yeah. Anything I just stand over here as a shark rivalry. supporter and just yeah. not say anything. You know, <laughs> living off five years ago, basically. Justin, I've got to say, seriously, yes. though, it this as I said, this interview I, I was very much looking forward to. And, and at the very beginning of the season, I said you were just one of the most interesting players of this game and very hard to, to read and analyse as an armchair critic. But I think... Everything that you've told us in this interview has just lived up to just everything that I ever thought about you. You've, you've sold us so well on what you've done. You've left mystery there to a point where I think you're just so unique as a player. And it's just, I think you've been so honest and upfront with everything that I just think it solidifies your reputation as just such a unique and maybe the most unique player that has ever played Australian Survivor. I, I have been enthralled by everything you've told us here today. And I'm looking forward so much in a couple of weeks when we can get you back on on our reunion oh, so that we can fun. have people joining us here because I want you versus David, both the Davids. We'll get David Mason and Oldfield, so it can just be Justin and the Davids uh, and just learning it. But I have seriously, before I hand over to Matt to say his thank yous, I, I've I've been enthralled by every single second of this, so really do appreciate. And can can I can we get you to hold the logie while we say goodbye to you? I just I've never had that opportunity. I think to yeah. have a a logie winner hold a logie by saying goodbye. That's a very weird thing yeah. that I've always wanted to try and do. And he's getting the torch too. The torch. And Look at that. That kick torch. There you go. Here we go. Look at this. The, the <laughs> Logie that Rove never got, Matt. That's one well, right there. It's a bit dirty. So <laughs> I make mean, clean it every day. It goes up. up uh, I've got a lot of martial arts and skiing from a World Cup awards. And, um, you know, I, I kind of do that for a reason, guys, because when you, when you have a bad day, I was always um, – um, I got to – you know, I got to ski with Buzz, Buzz, Buzz Aldrin many, many, wow. many, many years ago. And I asked him a lot of questions and, 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 and he did this charity in Colorado that I was invited to. And that's how I met him. And he said, you know, never, ever worry about the things you're doing wrong or, 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 or some of the, or some of your, your, your problems or hurdles, but, but make sure, make sure you put your achievements in front of you to remind you when things get tough. And he has all these photos of presidents and people, you know, and national security advisors and the space shuttle, and, you know, Apollo 13. He has all these things in front of him. He goes, you know, guys, when I'm ever having a bad day, you know, always remind yourself of what you achieved and how you've won. And sometimes when you go outside and you lose or you don't have a good day, um, at least you can come home and, and, and see it. So I do, I keep my awards and, and my things that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of. I mean, they're not, they're not on the internet. They're only in my home and, 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 and I, and I keep them. Well, this is on the internet now, the Logie, you're holding it. Look at that. Look at that. There you go. Yeah. What what an award. In In good condition, but yeah. So this is kind of my living room and kind of where I kind of just, you know, um, and when, when, I'm, when I'm doing have a, a tough day, like I said, I put David Oldfield's photo on Black Belt <laughs> Bond over there and I just give a little smack, you know what I mean? Well, well just quickly before I hand it to Matt, um, we, we've, as you can see what we're wearing, we kind of got some, you know, makeshift buffs made up for your season. We'll, we'll, we'll send you, we've got some for you to send you. So you'll oh, be able wonderful. to have a, have a, have a couple. We'll, we'll even send you the, the Kukula one, even though you're never on Kukula, you can, you can have the set. So oh. go that way for you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Man. And just, Justin, before I say my final words to you, I want to thank Ben. I mean, if it wasn't, Ben, if it wasn't for you, mate, making some phone calls and tracking down Justin, we would never have had this Logie winner on our podcast. So, look, and, and Justin, yeah, I knew this interview was going to be great. I mean, you're such an interesting character, such an interesting person, and uh, you definitely haven't let us down, mate. I, I loved your honesty throughout this whole whole interview mate and then um i'm really glad that all those years ago what 15 years ago you said yes to playing this game mate because I, I enjoyed watching you mate and <laughs> i've enjoyed uh interviewing you today 
Yeah, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate this walk down memory lane. It's been a bit of nostalgia uh, for me because I, I do I do forget. I do try. I do make. I do forget these things I do in in life because some sometimes they they come with a lot of um, media or fame or they come with some energy that I don't. I just go, okay, that was a good piece of my life. What did I learn? And then I kind of move forward. And then the way you guys have brought this back to life and and um, and looked at it, your 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 interest and, and enthusiasm to uh, share how you see this journey. Um, I th I think it's wonderful. I think you do a great job, and and, and I think. You know, it brings out a lot of fond memories. I think, and for all those that you you are you are interviewing, I think it's really, really, um, it's a great thing that you are doing and proud of. I mean, we're, it's a great it's 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 a great show. It's great for me. It's something I'm I'm still very very proud of, and and it warms my heart. And to talk about it again has warmed my heart, and so I really appreciate you for bringing that out of me. Thank you.